How's it going? My name is William, and this is my so-called life. Golden Touch on your new Singer Golden Touch and Sew machine. Dozens of exclusive features like this new built-in needle threader for the golden slant needle and the push-button bobbin that winds right in the machine. What a wonderful new feeling. You can do all three kinds of sewing. Straight, zigzag, and chain stitch. Touch and sew the push-button bobbin way. Come sew on one at your Singer Center. Choose from five touch and sew models from $149.95. What's new for tomorrow is at Singer Today. You know, the funny thing is, it only took me three years to figure out how to do that. How's it going? My name is William, and welcome to my so-called life. I hope everybody's having a great evening. I hope you liked it, because I'll be using that for a while. <laughs> How's it go? Great to see you, Kilroy. Great to see you, dog. We can't, we can't just go past dog's wit. We have to look at... uh. 
Summer Dog's comments. Hello, hello. <laughs> Great to see you, Pam, Joy, anyone who's watching right now. Butterfly. Great to see you. Great to see you. My glasses are so dark, I can't see the chat. <laughs> Just want to be cool, but I can't see anything. These glasses are so dark, I can't see like two feet in front of my face. <laughs> Yay, three years well spent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope everybody's having a good evening. I have quite a few things I'll be doing tonight. Why buy a sewing machine when you can have all your clothes made by a Malaysian for you? Thank you for getting those comments in early, dog. And before I get before we get to the good stuff, this program is for entertainment purposes only, and its content is not intended to malign any religion, lack thereof race, company, individual, or wigs. All opinions expressed by my so-called life and program participants are solely their personal views and do not reflect the views of every single human being on planet Earth. I hope everybody has a great evening flying my so-called life airlines. And if you need an Activia, if you're having a bad day, we have exits on both sides. That's Ama Izquierda and Derecha. <laughs> Oh, that weirdly reminds me. There's a hockey game on. <laughs> so it's been almost, I don't know, a month, and I still haven't gone to the Walmart by my house. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Hello, Polish and Assembled. You should um come and join. Hello, hello. I apologize for my quick wit and banter. It's okay, dog. It's okay. But I went to the Walmart. <laughs> Do you know what I feel like? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a group called Walmart Anonymous. For all the people like me who live within a mile of a Walmart. And I live within three miles of four. <laughs> and if I went over the hill, there's probably one every like four or five miles. Yay. Hello. Hello. Awesome. It's great to see everybody i sincerely thank everybody who watches my videos thank you for uh pam thank you for commenting my opening um i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> seriously thank you to everybody hello hello yay water Nate is in the house <laughs> all right so, I'm not even going to waste your time. I went to Walmart. I may or may not have bought an oopsie or two. But here in the house of sewing, I have no excuses. You will be the only member. I'm used to it at this point. I haven't I haven't been to a Walmart since Christmas. I wish I can say that, Alibaba. I wish I could, I could say that out loud. I'm going to be kung fu fighting with this 39 featherweight while we chat tonight. I'm nearly finished. Wow. Did you just come upon that or is that something you're refurbishing? I'm interested, Butterfly. I am extremely interested. I believe your crowd has gotten bigger with the dog's nonsense and involvement here. Absolutely, dog. I went to Walmart and found fabric on sale. Now I need to ground myself. Pam, I'm going to put myself in the opposite corner. <laughs> I was walking through and I told myself like, um, this particular Walmart that I go to, it's huge. It is literally three times the size of what I would consider a normal Walmart. You could take three Walmarts and put it in. The garden section is the size of the Walmart by my house. So I had this whole plan of parking on the far side. They put oopsies by the clothes. I think that's cruel. <laughs> but I said out loud, I'm walking with my cart, minding my own business. I was like, did they seriously put oopsies by the food? That reminds me, later I will be eating cinnamon rolls when our friend comes in. <laughs> but I only bought three. So I'm not going to oopsie shame myself too hard. But Mount Oopsie... <laughs> Is growing. 
excuse me, excuse me, yay, Walmart oopsies are amazing. You know what's funny? I already have um, two projects with done with one. The reason I bought one of them is because it matches my weird grandma's material, couch material. So I'm actually going for something. I'm not just randomly um, buying stuff which I kind of am. Butterfly, do you show how, how you fix the machines on your channel? Servicing this machine from someone, it, ha it has been touched. It hasn't been touched in years. The motor was a mess. It's pretty now. I love that. I absolutely love that. Three at a time adds up. <laughs> I've been using them for lining and for everything. I've really been guilting myself to use them. And tonight, I think I'm going to uh, make a couple koofies because I found the remnants of this fur material that I've had for years and years that I forgot about. So we'll see how it ends up. And I'm going to make a red koofie out of the um, two yards of that red bath mat material because my fur coat is awesome. <laughs> and it needs a couple of accessories like a hat, something. It needs something. And I'm going to make a giant furry hat. And at this point, I don't, I don't know if I even care if the colors match. Because the other fur I have is kind of off. But it doesn't really matter. I do watch other channels that repaint and fix featherweights. I've seen quite a few videos like that from quite a few um, YouTubers. It's really interesting. I went through this weird phase of watching. Um, I know Alibaba says the machines aren't the best. But in India, they remake the old Singer machines. And I kind of want one. I kind of really want one. So I watch those videos all the time. <laughs> and if I feel like don't, if I if I do not feel like watching anything like screamy or abrasive in the morning, I'll watch those machines. And it'll show literally from the forge all the way until they're done making it. Well. I will make you the the new I will make you the new PewDiePie that sews. It may be more difficult than I thought. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. Could you learn to tap dance? I don't do either. <laughs> love the love the one displayed on the form. I need um I need like an oopsie shelf because they are definitely starting to grow. Me too. I'm going to start painting them in a few weeks. Awesome. Oh, Waternay is not a fan at all. <laughs> I want one of those um, faux singers from India so bad. I want one of them so bad. And their hand crank too. A modern hand crank is something that I um, that I don't have. Cool last one. Watch. She failed the machine. Wow. Do you know what's really funny? I have a, um, I can't see with my glasses. I have a video called The Art of Failure. It was the first time I truly could not refurbish a sewing machine, but I showed, um, like, hey, not every single sewing machine is going to be a winger. A winger, a winner. <laughs> I used to, <laughs> we know that you're a triple threat. <laughs> should i make a furry coat out of all the oopsies i have i'll show you well one isn't an oopsie i i know this is shocking to to most people who don't know me i inherited a lot of fabric i um no joke took everything out of my grandma's linen closet my father had fabric and so over the past couple of years i incorporated it i incorporated it into my channel but stuff has been forgotten, lost. It's just all over the place. And I found something. Cool last one. Oh, watch. She foiled the, the machine. Yeah, I really do need one. <laughs> uh, they probably still use hand cranks in, in northern India. It's very outdated by modern standards. Most businesses in northern India still use typewriters. With my traditional training, I would thrive there. I would thrive. <laughs> I'm from that generation that was taught, like, you better not mess up on a typewriter. A crazy quilt. Furry fabric coat. 
wow, I kind of like that idea. I kind of really like that idea. I, you know what? I have a ton of furry material. I bagged most of it and put it in my hall closet and I forgot about it. And I opened up my hall closet and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. It. And I closed it immediately because it, um, it sheds. When you touch the bag, you can see the fur coming out of the bag. That stuff is no joke. And this is the furriest coat that I have ever made. Hands down. This thing shed all over the room. It's still, there's still fur all over the place. I vacuumed as much as I could, but I'm going to come in here with a leaf blower. <laughs> Perhaps you can fool the MAGA Muppets. Then you can actually behead a Sasquatch. Then you could be famous. It's a decapitated Bigfoot in the background, right? <laughs> if you tell enough lies, people will believe a dog. <laughs> what are the machines from India called? Um, Kilroy, there's, oh, they still sell treadles in India. I sell, I see those machines for sale on Marketplace. You, I really, you know what, because of where I live, we really do not get things like that. I wish I could see something like that for sale. Butterfly Singer and, and USHAR2 brands. They do refurbish the old singers and make them look brand new. I've, I'm addicted to watching uh, videos of all different types of sewing. I'm really into sewing machines. I think it's because I grew up watching Mr. Rogers. I'm obsessed with manufacturer videos. <laughs> and, and you know, that's a good thing to blame Mr. Rogers for. <laughs> I learned to type on a typewriter. I still have a 1961 Royal Empress typewriter. 40 pounds and you'll need to clear a yard space. <laughs> That's awesome. The machine in India are called five-year-old kids. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Hey, Mona, how's it going? Great to see you. Great to see you. I keep the furry fabric in a bag also. I keep it in a bag hidden in my hall closet because I don't know what to do. It sheds so much, but I like working with it. So great to see you. Great to see you. Well, they sell hand cranks and treadles. Yay. Hello. Hello. Great to see you, Mona. I love old, old singers. Me too. I need to get a camera I can walk around with because behind me, there's at least 30 of them lined up. <laughs> And I'm really um, brand loyal. I have most of my singers up top. And um, the commercial I constantly show of the singer Touchtronic, there is one right there. <laughs> All those commercials I show, I actually have the sewing machine of whatever commercial I'm showing. Yay. Hello. Hello. You know what's funny? A long time ago, I believe it was Alibaba asked me to start sewing on one of those, and I need to. I have a Kenmore motor that I use for all my old singers because they're, you know, they're interchangeable. But I definitely need to get on that. Yay. Hello, hello. USHA has a factory where they show them cast new machines. India Singer makes new machines as well. Not as good as the old ones made long ago. <laughs> I agree. I, I like how they bring them back to life. Because if you think about it, that's um, in a small way, that's what I do. You know, but I'm not like, I um, I actually have a sound, um, a sand blasting booth and everything. But I haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> I would love to see that Alibaba. They have a ton of videos. It's one of the weird things I watch on YouTube are people um, literally from the beginning um, when they cast the metal and everything all the way until they're done making the machine. I love those commercials. They cracked me up. Me too. It's the unreal expectations. It's the unreal. Like you're going to be a better person if you use a touch and sew. Little did they know it was going to be the most hated um, sewing machine ever. <laughs> Get your housework done so you can <laughs> exactly all oh, those commercials get me they do they do <laughs> hey will where is mona's blue wrench oh dog thank you you're right you are so right you know what dog you are a good administrator 
<laughs> there we go. I, everybody, go check out Mona. She has an amazing channel. I'm always at work when she's uh, when her lives are going. Went to the hospital today for an appointment. My platelet count is slowly coming up, but those doses isn't still isn't dialed right. The autoimmune thing is stubborn as a mule, but slowly getting better. We are here for you, Kilroy. I hope you feel better. Also, Kenmore can. There, for some reason, this one particular Kenmore I use on all my black singers, and it just, um, I just kind of got used to it. It's one of those weird things. Yay. Hello. Hello. Those two manufacturers don't refurbish. I love a blasting booth, but I don't need the drama of being the guy in the village with the black. <laughs> so true. That is so true. That's another thing. It's kind of like a truck where people find out they're like, oh, you have a sandblasting booth? Hey, I have all this old furniture that I need painted. Oh, seriously, I hope you feel better, Kilroy, though. We're here for you. I'll try getting people some links. Awesome. Dog cracked me. Cracked that whip. Off. <laughs> you are very appreciated, Mona. You are very appreciated. And I force everyone at my job to watch your lives. <laughs> there are people who aren't even into sewing that watch your life. <laughs> it's terrible when you have control of what everybody watches. I'm like, we're watching Moda. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. But no one complains. No one, no one says a word. They know I'm really into sewing. They know. <laughs> well, now and again, it needs a slap. He's too happy for the, I am a happy human being. I am. Life is better when you're um, when you're having a good time. Yay! Here's singer in India. Absolutely. I had a Kenmore with Tower of Power, but it but it was slow. <clears throat> there was a singer cabinet that I'm kind of mad that I passed up on. And I went back to the Salvation Army where they had it. I saw it in the window. And the Salvation Army by my house is closed indefinitely from what the kids said. And I looked at that and I'm like, I should have bought that sewing machine. Awesome. Awesome. Dog, that's what happens when you take the sewing speedball. <laughs> I, I feel like I should sing the Popeye song on that one. <laughs> we didn't do much. That's okay. That's okay. I love a good conversation because I'm running around doing all kinds of crazy stuff. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube is that, you know, you find um, people who are into what you're into. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh, so this coat claimed my serger. It really did. I snapped the needle and then I tried to um, undercut it by putting a really cheap needle in and it snapped on contact. <laughs> but I, I, um, I went to Michael's. I'm telling you, I'm really boycotting the Walmart by my house because that place has just gone downhill. So I went into Michael's and I was surprised they had surgery needles. I don't know why Michael's is even open. My crafting and sewing people, do you have a Michael's by your house or anyone in general? Do you live near a Michael's? Do they do anything for you? <laughs> just a question. Just a question. I always suspected that there was drugs involved in the making of the death cloak. The death cloak. I really should put my glasses on. The local Salvation Army had to consolidate with another one. The state government bought their buildings, and now they use it as a training center for, emer for emergency, emergency personnel. I, I hope they're not doing that with the one by my house. I was so surprised. That place has been um, open as long as I can remember. I don't go to Michael's. They're too expensive. <laughs> yes, but I won't go there. I was so shocked. The Michael's by my house used to be something. And I guess over the years, it's I jokingly call it the cricket store. 
because if you have a cricket, they, you know, if they have aisles of stuff, but it's kind of bare bones besides that. They really don't even have um, knitting thread. I was shocked because that was knit, that was knitting heaven a few years ago. And during the pandemic, they had everything. Michael's had everything and it's kind of falling apart. I want a hand crank so bad. I passed one up about 10 years ago for 15 bucks and I still can't believe it. You know what, Butterfly? There's quite a few machines that I've walked past that I'm like, why did I do that? There was one. <laughs> there was a machine that I walked out of the store. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go eat lunch. I'm going to come back and see if, and see if I still want it. I ate lunch. I came back and the machine was gone. <laughs> And I'm glad that person bought the machine. It's not like I don't have an army of sewing machines. Even if I go into an industrial, get in an industrial accident and lost a couple of fingers, I could count the amount of times I've been in a Michaels in one. <laughs> oh, they they bought our local our local Pat Cattens Cantons and and let the employees go. They could oh, they could reapply with no. That's with no so seniority that's awful that's the terrible thing about big corporations is when they come through and destroy your town hey how's it going nightmare baby good to see you good to see you awesome awesome michael's takes joanne's coupons <laughs> or at least they used to i'm gonna try that i'm gonna try that someone i know actually works at the one um, by my house yay hello hello <laughs> Screw cricket. Their honest description model now. Even if you bought the machine, you'll still have to pay cricket to use it. I'm so glad you said that because I don't. That's the one machine on earth I do not have. And I'm this close to buying an industrial sewing machine. I mean, like, I'm like trying to talk myself out of like, why don't I have one? <laughs> but we'll see what happens this weekend. If I show up and it's there, I'll buy it. Maybe. Ah, oh, and then well, I won't get into that. Hello, hello, yay! Great to see you. Great to see you. All right, let me check. Oh man, I should really learn to clear that out. Good grief! Michaels was awful. Target still sucks. I'm still mad at my adventure to Target of how on their, on their website, they said the Target by my house has a fabric aisle. They said it had a fabric section. I walked in with my cell phone saying, hey, this particular Target in this town on this one street that happens to be in your area has a fabric section. And they did not. So in my um, in my notes, I, I wrote Target still sucks. I'm still mad about it. Still mad. <laughs> Get an older cricket. I just want to make stickers. I'm obsessed with making stickers. Well, buying stickers. Will doesn't use coupons. He just bluffs that he has them. <laughs> Same as calling a pizza parlor and lying that you have the coupon for the free wings. In my defense, they never check. They never check. I want an industrial walking foot and long arm. There's one that's um, by a... This thrift store that I all I've been going for years and years, they have one, um, and it's a, it's affordable, but it's so used, it's so trashed, but it's right up my alley because I love refurbishing sewing machines. So I'm trying to talk myself out of buying it. I saw a nice walking foot today. I'm gonna get it, but oh, I'm gonna get it, but neat machine. That's awesome. That's awesome, Alibaba. I know I say this all the time and still pester the chat to the end. This time, I'm gone. Good night, everybody. Dog, it was great to see you. It was great to see you. And if I see you later, it's good to see you again. <laughs> Target has the stupidest logo in the world. Talk about making it easy for a tank crew to take your store. <laughs> Man, there's all kind. The Target of my house has a Walgreens in it, all kinds of crazy stuff, except for fabric. <laughs> Have a great night, dog. Have a great night. Hope to see you soon. Dog is the James Brown of the My So Called Life chat. 
like hell you're gonna win. <laughs> but to be fair to be fair i have hardcore sleeping problems says the guy who drinks espresso at eight o'clock at night so i completely understand there's people on the other side of the world that probably think i live near them because i'm all up in their chat i'm blue in a couple chats where you would be like how do you know anyone in new finland how do you know anyone and <laughs> as i'm sure other people are blue and weird in weird chats and you know we're i I'm, I'm into all sorts of things <laughs> absolutely do you see the commercial where the lady scans her stomach and says that she likes to eat tats too? <laughs> no, but I love commercials like that. Oh, I love commercials like that. It's 11.15 at night here and I'm drinking espresso. You know, um, coffee still grabs me, but not um, like it used to. Do you know what's so funny? That leads me into a question. Do do you think espresso is a controlled substance? I know a lot of people who have been giving me a hard time lately because I brought the espresso machine back at my job. <laughs> Somebody was like, can I bring a tap here? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I've heard of changing tags, but eating tags. <laughs> I'm definitely going to check that out. I'm definitely going to check that out. The Target by my house has actually been a place of controversy and people love pulling their cell phones out. And it's always something really embarrassing. It's always funny. Like people's towns are known for museums and all these crazy things. And my town is known for people getting in fights at Target. It's so sad. No, not control. <laughs> people have been giving me a hard time because I brought the espresso machine back. It helps. It helps productivity. <laughs> no controlled substances put you in jail. Espresso keeps you out. of Thank you. And everybody has an extra pep in their step. And I see people drop in shots in their coffee. And I'm like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Will present Nightmare Baby with, with their deserved blue wrench. And the gospel according to the dog will be fulfilled. It's your side chat. So it is written. Thank you, dog. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, whoops. I almost I almost timed out Kilroy. These phones, these phones they get bigger and bigger, okay? They're still not made for people with giant hands. They're still not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mm. Awesome. 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 Yay. Target is the MMA for suburb suburban Karen. I do. I live in this. I live in the hardcore suburbs. I was so embarrassed. There's at least um two Stanley Cup videos. There's one where people are scrambling over cups. That's in my neighborhood. There's at least two or three times where I was on Twitter just watching a random video of two Karens about to fight and they pan the camera and I'm like, oh, that's my hometown. <laughs> For some reason, people love to get crazy at the Target by my house. Doesn't happen at the Walmart. Matter of fact, the one that's by the freeway, they have Wetzel's pretzels. They make fresh pretzels. Every time I go there, I'm like, well, I'm not on a diet today. <laughs> oh, see, now I'm craving pretzels. Now I'm craving pretzels. <laughs> Kil <laughs> Hi, dog. Kilroy is too big for their boots and needs a couple of minutes on the naughty step. <sighs> oh, what, what kind of Black Friday brawls do you get out there? <laughs> well, I think it's also um, in my area, we have outlet stores um a mall a target four walmarts in my town we have four walmarts i want to impress upon you how that's like the equivalent of a starbucks being every half mile in my town there's there's famous four corners in my town you cannot go anywhere without going to a walmart <laughs> 
Absolutely. I was kind of um, mad. They put a Nike outlet store in my, like right by my house. And I'm like, where were you when I was in high school and I cared? <laughs> but it's so true. It's so true. You know what? Now that you brought that up, I need to go to the Nike store and go crazy and um, buying socks. Love you all guys. Take care. Like and subscribe to the. <laughs> Thank you, dog. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm going to make something with my, um, oh, I have a shirt covering it. So I'm going to make something with my drape material. I had plans on doing it today, but today has been crazy. So eventually I will get there. <laughs> hey, dog. <doggy. laughs> I'm not completely retired. <laughs> Just don't bother <laughs> Oh, okay. So I had to. I purchased something today because I went to Walmart. I bought Oopsies. And I'm on this weird thing of buying series because I grew up as a television watcher. I'm someone who loved television as a kid. As you can hear with my lungs, I've always had autoimmune issues because of my lungs. So I stayed at home and I watched a ton of television I've watched everything that was on TV, at least, you know, that was from the 70s because it was reruns for people who know my age. I'm in my 40s. But my whole point is. Why are customer service people so angry? I just wanted to buy Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> so if you don't see me online for the next couple of days, you wonder why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> No, but um, these series are starting to become really affordable and I'm a collector. So I'm starting to purchase all the stuff that I'm really into because about every six months I purge my YouTube because I constantly watch YouTube and I ask myself like, why am I subscribed to half of these things? Or I was really into this six months ago, but I'm not. So I've, I'm going back to um, watching things I love, which is basically sewing content and sci-fi stuff. <laughs> the waiting room at the hospital has reminded me why I don't watch TV. Five minutes of a show, 20 minutes of commercials. Oh, that reminds me. <laughs> There's a hockey game on. The second you said commercials, it totally reminded me because um, every, it, it, on a night like this, when I'm streaming, every time I look up, I see a commercial instead of a hockey game. Let me check real quick. Okay, just making sure. Okay. I actually love watching television, though. At least the old school stuff. But again, it's more of a bias. It's way more of a bias. Because it's, um, you know... Admit it, you watch hockey to watch some probably drunk guys on ice skates <laughs> beat each other up. You know, every time I say this, people are like, are you serious? I find hockey strangely soothing. I don't know what it is. For some reason, I love watching hockey. But more than anything else, like baseball, sometimes I'll be sitting there Especially when I'm sitting on the couch and it gets all quiet. I pass out. Hockey is soothing to me. <laughs> all right. Hockey is absolutely soothing to me. Oh, so I purchased... Um, I purchased a ton of sewing needles from Michael's. Because I couldn't find my sewing needles. <laughs> So when I find the box, I will have hundreds of sewing needles. I was so, uh, that's what took so long. I was so disappointed. I'm like, where's the box? But it's prompted me to clean this room again. I haven't been to a Walmart here for like a year. Not as popular here. Um, That's one thing I, I miss about living in that area is that, uh, especially in the city, everything has to be incorporated in the city and they do not allow Walmart in that particular city. I watch Hitchcock and James Bond movies to relax. Totally get that. 
it's the strangest thing to me, but it's just, it's one of those things that adheres to me. Even at a game when people are screaming obscenities and losing their brains, I get this weird Zen. <laughs> Hockey is the, it's the strangest thing. And I love playing it too. I made my own net. I went to Home Depot like I was 12, got some PVC pipe and some net, you know. I hate Walmart. It's like Home Depot. Got to walk eight miles for a jug of milk. That is true. For some reason, especially in my area, they build the stadium-sized Walmarts. The one I went to this evening, um, I should stretch in the parking lot. I should seriously be in the parking lot like doing my stretches because it's, it's a walk. It's a walk. And I know people, people know me because <laughs> I stick out in my town. So if I got on one of those carts, they would be like, sir, we know you're able body. Get out of here. <laughs> I think a Hitchcock marathon would be fun. I own a ton of Hitchcock on uh, VHS DVD. Is I love watching H Hitchcock. Again, I watched the movie foreign correspondent. It is, I think it has like the first action scene where something explodes. It's it's something like that. I love that movie. It's soothing to me. Is that Alf in the back play? Yeah, yes, it is. And it's the Alf cartoon. Um, much like Battlestar Galactica, I purchased the um, entirety of Alf. And there was all kinds of stuff I forgot about that made me extremely nostalgic. I mean, extremely nostalgic. Yay! Hello! How's I don't know why doing? I always have to have issues on a Monday, but I made it. Mondays okay. are going to Monday. <laughs> there we go. Lights. How are you doing? I'm okay. Today has been, you know, it's so funny. Like streaming is the relaxing time of my day because I'm running around so much. The soccer mom parking wars are real. Oh, entitlement. It's the most passive aggressive battle I've ever been in my <laughs> life. It's like playing battleship with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's serious, Kilroy. That is so serious. Do you have any um, mega chains by your house? Yeah. The the all, normal all the things. Yeah. Yeah. Box stores don't care about customers. They care about selling products. So so true. But like we, I really even where I live, like all the farms are going out of business. We really do not get mom and pop places. Like when I was a little kid, you could buy fresh corn, mm. squash. Now I'm craving corn and squash. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and I are going to make dinner tomorrow. So she's going to pick up some vegetables, but I don't know what she's going to get. I don't think corn because she has seems to have developed some sort of corn intolerance butterfly says hello hello butterfly in box stores i'm like ron swanson i know more than you it's i feel like that about a couple of things over the years um i have acquired the same knowledge that the apple technicians have i feel like i know more than the people that work at apple And you practice in the mirror saying, well, did you turn it off and turn it back on again? Oh, that drives. If you ever <laughs> want to set me off. <laughs> in customer service, there is somebody oh, that I absolutely love and respect and I miss her. She used to work customer service and they had a, they had different rules for New Yorkers and Californians because apparently we pop off. <laughs> And I'm like, are you telling me trade secrets? And she's like, kind of. <laughs> but, but like, and it's true. Like, you can't say I'm sorry because that will infuriate me. Like, if you say I'm sorry, I'm like, we're not here for that. I need answers. <laughs> <laughs> Corn intolerance would suck. They put it in everything. It's true. Yeah. It is true. In America, that's like, I'm not, I'm not even trying to be mean. 
I like when people have gluten allergies or something, I'm like, what do you eat? Oh, I've done gluten free <laughs> a couple times for various reasons. Talk about in everything. Oh, it's terrible. Just hit it with a hammer. If it doesn't work, then you have a perfect excuse to buy a new one. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. <laughs> the trouble with the turn it off and turn it back on again is you can do that three times, but when they tell you to do it and you're like, fine, I've done this and you do it one more time, of course, that's the time that like solves all your problems. Recently, my external hard drive after the um, after the the reboot, my external hard drive, it, the computer would not read it. So I turned my computer off. I unplugged it. I did everything. So when I called, every question they asked, I was like, I already did that. I already did that. I'm not kidding you. After the fourth, I already did that. The guy was like, well, you stumped me. And I was like, at least you're honest. Because <laughs> usually they'll go around in circles and it's like, I don't have time like that. I, if I'm calling you for help, it's not because I have a ton of time on my hands. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have relax is that relaxing weather your brain goes soft and you pop off <laughs> oh when you don't have real weather perpetual sunshine does give you a sense of entitlement i guess do you think do you think mm, no but i think that there's a there's sort of a socioeconomic strata mm -hmm. where people have like just enough money but then they also are perhaps still aspirational and so they kind of feel like they should be able to get anything that they want and they you know it's like that combination of they think that they're one of the people but they at the same time they think that they're above the people and i like that i you know, like that it's true if you saw what I had to do to earn all these sewing machines, you have to learn how to drive a tractor with 17 gears. And that's the old <laughs> one. You're um you're doing the action movie, the 1970s action movie. Uh your voice isn't matching your lips. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna exit and come back <laughs> because for some reason that usually seems to work. <laughs> <laughs> California wine California wine doesn't have proper vintages because the weather is the same all the time. Do you know I didn't know that? We do have perpetual sunshine here. It is perpetually 70 degrees. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> so Oh yeah, I fixed my surgery. So because I fixed my surgery, I need to um hi. <laughs> You're still oh, over there. Hold on, let me um that was weird. Oh, good night, Mona. Sorry we didn't get to chat more. Have a great night, Mona. Thank you so much for stopping by. That was so strange, it just kicked off. You know, this is live. I, YouTube reminds me of like early live television where they're like, Dave, can you hear me? And they're like, I can hear you. And they're like, can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> or like the newscasts where for some reason they just have to send people out into the Cat 5 hurricane to report live from the scene. I will never, for the life of me, I will never understand that. And I think there should be a new rule because most people in California weren't weren't uh, born here, at least in Southern California. If there's snow, then whoever works at the news at the um, news agency that is from snow has to go do the newscast. Because <laughs> if I'm from Hermosa Beach, I'm not gonna want to go to the Grapevine and like live from Channel. I would. Nope, I'd be done, even with like 15 codes on. 
And I lived in somewhere where it snowed. You know, that's why I moved back. <laughs> Did you see the um the one with the the guy in what is it Montana or something? And he's reporting, and he sees some buffalo, and he's like, "Nope, I'm not messing with that." Because <laughs> he's a, he's a smart man. Because he's a... <laughs> there was this video on on I believe it was Twitter where this woman was petting a buffalo in Yellowstone and people were like please because at first they were trying to be calm to not disturb the buffalo this one guy ran up he's like what's wrong with you she got gored oh leave, leave those animals alone <laughs> it's okay Alibaba I fall asleep to all kinds of live streams it's okay I have a question for Alibaba before before you fall <laughs> before you fall asleep doesn't have to be right this second, but just, you know, if you're getting drowsy, let me know. Kilroy with the comment of the evening. <laughs> so far. <laughs> that is from Snow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. There was I have a question I'm gonna ask you, I'll ask you later. Okay. Should I ask Alibaba my question? Yeah. I won an auction on eBay for a foot that I've never heard of before. It's a singer stripping foot, number 86294. And I'm not familiar with a stripping foot, but it looks to me like a darning foot. So I'm a little confused. Do you think it's just um, reimagined? I don't know, but Let it's got the it little. Again. It's got the little spring, and it's got you know, so like it goes, it tucks in. It's got the spring, and it's got mm -hmm. the little tiny hole. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. Except they called it a stripping foot. So I don't know if. Maybe because Alibaba says it's a needle clamp. No, this isn't a needle clamp. It's um I mean, unless it's like a needle clamp. No, it's no there's no hole for a needle. Yes, Kilroy, I saw that, but it's hard for me to watch people defacing national parks. There's a video of people destroying these um sand castles in Hawaii. There's like all different kinds of things. It's hard for me to watch videos like that. Speaking of national parks, did you see those two dumb, dumb as a man children who destroyed an ancient rock formation at Lake Mead National Recreation Area? Oh my goodness. There's a hole. Well, I mean, that looks like a hole for the needle bar, but then so the needle goes uh, like, but where is then the, where does the needle go oh yes there's a hole for the needle bar i'm taking notes because i own one and i could probably reach in my roll away and grab one <laughs> and so so like the foot and the i don't know like the foot and the needle bar needle go on the same the same spot yeah. rah rah Those hello kids. hello you know what skits i missed your other picture um, give me permission to show your other picture. What's up, Dose? How's hey, it Dose. going? Good to see you. Good to see you. I am. So, I am sorry. I bought. Um, I bought uh, cinnamon buns on my trip to. Um, no, because I missed your picture last time, and you took a trip. West Coasters travel. We need to we need to share that that we travel. West Coasters go places. Sure. Thumbs up for the travel. <laughs> and for the record, I've been saying this. It still says Twitter online. At least in my thing, it says, Would you like to go to Twitter? And I would say yes. Everyone still calls it Twitter. That was that was one of his more monumental bad decisions in my opinion okay so we're gonna share this one first i don't think i was i was gonna 
want I want to off somebody today, but I wanted to off those two when I read about them. When people deface national parks, like I'm telling you, I jokingly said, um, yeah, I said on Rashawn's channel that we should bring back stocks and throw tomatoes at people. But I think if you deface a national park, we should at least have an hour we could throw tomatoes at you. What? So what? I didn't see. What did they do to the rock formation? And what was their excuse? You know what? I'm still mad about my um, doses. Commenters reminded me. I'm still mad my Jenko's tutorial got erased. <laughs> it's what? Though I I was gonna have a forty five minute video, my last Friday shows was gonna be my so called life the movie. <laughs> oh, I didn't get to watch it yet. What happened? The update happened and it kicked out my external hard drive. That's why I was calling Apple in a panic. Oh. And then when I finally got it on, it erased everything, all my all my work because I didn't oh. save my progress. If you call it. <laughs> If you call it X, shave your phone. Shove your phone up your ass. I seriously, I think I need to start wearing my glasses all the time. They ruined it, basically. They're still at large. The NPS is requesting any information that anybody might have on them. Wow. You know you're, you're crazy when you're wanted. That's awful. All right. Let me I see. Skits is sharing some pictures, so let me share this. Skits, do you, is this uh, New Mexico or Arizona? Can you see that? I can. Okay. Awesome. Skits awesome. missed an opportunity to push over some of those rocks, apparently. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. That's one of the reasons I love driving towards Vegas was because you just get shots like that. Like where I live, it's um, the very end of the concrete jungle. But let's be real. It's concrete everywhere and plant trees everywhere. That's stunning. That was New Mexico. That's awesome. That's TJ. He went down there to do some funny stuff. <laughs> I miss TJ. I miss TJ, but I'm too old for TJ. I miss Tijuana. Oh, wow. Ooh. That is definitely nowhere around here. <laughs> Our beaches don't have trees. <laughs> it's true. You know it's true. Like we do not have tree in our local, at least in my local beaches, we do not have trees at all. You have to go north. Way north. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Oh, that reminds okay. me of sorry, that reminds me of Oregon. Hmm. <clears throat> That's lovely. I want to go there. I know we're now we both want to take a trip up north. Well, I don't know where that is. Meet up at Skitz's house. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Closest beach I have is Lake Erie. Plenty of trees there. It's crazy how um, the topography is different. Because when I went to Oregon, the water is just as cold um, as it is down here. But it's like you're going to the beach in the forest. <laughs> And here it's sand and, you know, there's literally restaurants on the ocean. <laughs> Skits says the last two are from Phoenix Electra. So it's changed. We're meeting up at Phoenix's house. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. Because Oregon is one of the most beautiful places. <laughs> I'm biased, though. I'm biased towards Oregon because I lived there. So I want to look at this a second longer. I miss you. <laughs> I, I kind of figured. We'll go back to Skits' picture. <laughs> I have a hard time wrapping my head around a, a body of water that big that's not the salty ocean. Same. Have you have you seen Lake Michigan or Lake Erie or? Um, I've seen. Oh darn! Now I'm forgetting. But the the one that Toronto is up against. 
What state does the map by the, by the hand? Is that Michigan? It's lots of states. I've been to and where, provinces. I've been to Michigan, I think. Whatever <laughs> state where they're like, I live on this part of the state, and they point to their hand. <laughs> it is absolutely. It does. It looks like Lake Michigan. Do you know, as somebody who's um, a desert dweller, oh, whoops, I'm glad. No, I don't want to do that. I almost left the stream. Lake Ontario, of course. Makes so much sense. <laughs> Absolutely. That doesn't look like Indiana. <laughs> Why don't I? I can't find my picture of the clam installed on my machine. Mm. Those are great pictures, though, Skits. Thank you for sharing. Now um, it makes me want to go to New Mexico. Alibaba, you should sign up for an Instagram or a X account just so you can communicate with us and send us pictures of sewing machine clamps. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm not even kidding. I need help every once in a while. <laughs> I get stumped or it's the old, what is this? I'll never forget. I knew someone who was a lifelong mechanic and I still don't know if they were messing with me half the time, but they would be like, I don't know what this is. And they throw it over their shoulders. They're ripping it out of the car. Oh, I don't know what this does. Oh dear. <laughs> Remind me to show you something afterwards. Okay. That doesn't that doesn't look like Indiana. I say that about anything. I can tell when it's not near my house. I'm like, oh, that doesn't look like anything near my house. New Mexico and Arizona are more beautiful than I was expecting. I lived in Arizona. Arizona is actually beautiful. And sometimes I think it's the space. Because you, at least when I lived there, I would get in my car and just drive and i'm sure it's incorporated in a town but this was 20 something years ago i had my skateboard in my car <clears throat> i was in mesa arizona and i got lost and i'm just driving on this endless road and i found a skate park literally like 60 miles out in the middle of the desert just a lonely skate park it was a real skate park in the middle of the desert that's random so still to this and it was so weird because it was so out in the middle of nowhere. Every time I went up on the ramp, I could see everything around me. Hmm. We also call that Chandler, Arizona. And that entire area is built up now. Uh -huh. <laughs> but when I lived there, Chandler was desert. <clears throat> if you sign up for those, I'll get overloaded <laughs> with well, others asking to. Nobody has to know, Alibaba. You can totally keep it private. Nobody has to know that it's your account, that you have one. You don't have to sign up your, you know, sync your friends with it or anything. You can be totally stealthy. Just cord here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll even ask questions through Waternay. And then she can ask you <laughs> I have a million questions. <laughs> I'll send you a dissertation. My version of why is there air? I have a million questions. And the desert lack of trees was great for my sinuses. I always said if I ever won the lottery, I'd move back to Arizona. But I'm going to move to the desert when I finally hit my uh, real golden years. Because I have, I am, you know, you can hear right now I have sinuses. <laughs> hello, hello. Awesome, awesome. Just today, I got over 400 inquiries. Oh, my okay. Goodness. So I can kind of see that because I keep my work phone separate from my everyday using phone because I'm technically like 24 hours a day on call and I get some crazy texts and like emails or like, or someone will email me and they'll be like, hey, my oven's on fire. What do I do? And I'm like, that was six hours ago. Why didn't you call me? <laughs> Ah, so I understand. Eating a ghost pepper is great for your sinuses too. So I'm gonna have, I have to ask you: Are you into this whole hot revolution of people who could probably never hang with heat, anyways? No, I can't hang. I it's love spice. Things. I'm sorry. I like spicy food, but there's like there's there's spicy, and then there's spicy. I like flavorful. A little bit of heat, but I'm not doing like anything higher than a medium. None of these extra hot, no ghost pepper, whatever. I don't, I'm not a go, I don't, I don't know if I've, if I've even gone um, that high up as far as heat, 
but I'm addicted to hot salsa from Vallarta. Hmm. The stuff that makes me sweat when I eat it, like, Ugh. I'm addicted to that stuff. I can't. And I know for a fact it's made with cayenne peppers or something in that, like, it, you get the hot sweats, like, you, like I can feel <laughs> Oh, oh dear, no. <clears throat> I think it's the only way I can eat tomatoes. <laughs> Just shock it into my system. I eat those those peppers. Ali, see Ali Baba and I. It's because Ali Baba and I are from the Paleozoic era. <laughs> <sighs> I sweat from a bell pepper. Come on, kids. Come on. You don't eat like, like even. Um, I can't believe I'm admitting this. I was running around, and when um, I went, there's a greasy spoon. It's the famous greasy spoon in my town. It's across the street from Isaiah's MMA thing. I did all my running around. I had about 15 minutes. I even got gas. I was actually impressed. And I went and got a chili dog with jalapenos on it. Goodness. Oh, it was so good. I should have got two. <laughs> <laughs> I buy the big bottles of Tabasco. It's barely hot to me anymore. I want to try this hot sauce from Australia. It's called Shit the Bed. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible title. Terrible title, but Australia, they um, don't mess around. And they call their breaks, like they call their smoke breaks, a smoko. And I'm not kidding you. I, everyone at my job calls it a smoko now. Because <laughs> I said it so many times. It's funny how different things are hot to different people. Like for me, wasabi. I just cannot this like if they've like touched the wasabi with the knife and then they cut my cucumber roll or whatever with the same knife. That's too hot for me. Really? Yeah. There's something about the horse. <laughs> I just can't deal. You know, um, my mom's like that. She's allergic to ho horseradish. I one time um, I'm not a big mayo buyer and I thought I was buying mayo and I bought horse radish mayo oh my i actually liked it it made me cry while i ate it <laughs> <laughs> i was in full like oh i actually kind of liked it <laughs> i can't say it but i'll eat it we gotta toughen up water and I, it skits up <laughs> i'm addicted to hot sauce but again i think it's also the culture i grew up in like I grew up eating, like, I'm a sauce person. I eat barbecue sauce, ranch. Like, I put sauce on everything. This is true. As I tell people, no soy Latina. <laughs> but it's it's even more than that. Like, um, I'm addicted to soy sauce. I can't eat Chinese food without soy sauce, but American Chinese food. <laughs> Because I go, I do go to Chinatown and eat the stuff, the off menu stuff, the real stuff. Are you into authentic food like that? Like, there's a difference between going to Panda, Panda Express and then going downtown and getting duck drop soup or like kimchi or like the, the real stuff, you know? I enjoy different, like trying different ethnic foods and things. So that's always that's, interesting to me. That's how I found out I love Armenian food and Filipino food. I would I would get fat in the Philippines. I actually like their food. <laughs> My mom and I went to an Ethiopian restaurant a couple times. So good. I'm biting a I'm I'm bidding on a painting attachment. I think it's Ooh. so cool. Never nice. Never I managed mind. to get. Oh, oh go sorry. ahead. No, go ahead. I managed to get one of those at a good price. So, don't go crazy and unless you really, really want that particular one, I'm not here to tell you what to do. But... <laughs> we are. The, we are literally the two last people on planet Earth to tell anyone to not buy something. <laughs> I'll speak for myself. I am the last person on Earth to tell somebody I'm going to binge Battlestar Galactica. Literally tomorrow morning, my son's going to walk in here and be like, really? 
You're still wearing the same vest when I went to bed. You did not sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> he calls me out. He calls me out. <laughs> um. Okay, so this is science, and Kilroy is 100% correct. Is it just me, or does the soy sauce in the packets you get from the takeout place taste better than the real soy sauce you buy in the store? Yes. I don't, again, I say this all the time. I don't know if it's environment or effect, but it's no secret. I recently have been a, become addicted to Chinese food that's in a seedier side of town. <laughs> and I will drive miles to this place. And actually, last weekend was the first, first time I didn't go in two months on the weekend. So, yes, the packets taste better. I don't know what it is. I was yeah. I wonder what it is. That's different. Do you think it's more concentrated? I don't know. Maybe there's more <laughs> salt in it, or I don't know. Just buy it. You can always sell it to some crackhead if you don't like <laughs> stealthy, except for us, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I've been able to find my old pictures since I changed my computer. Oh, that's frustrating. It's the worst. That's like when I lost my files, I let out my Wrath of Khan scream. Khan! Like, oh. oh. But, th but in that moment, um, I let it go, and I moved on. I pranced around in my hallway with my Jankos on, and I moved on. You know? There's really nothing I could do. Hmm. I miss the yeah. desert. Oh, I thought you lived in a deserty environment, butterfly. I have five different types of soy sauce. Well, Texas isn't like the entire state isn't a dust bowl. <laughs> it People seems would, like it to me. <laughs> like I live in L.A., and people would be shocked if they saw my neighbor. If you're not from L.A. and you saw my neighborhood, you'd be like, this is L.A.? Yes. <laughs> it's one of those crazy things. Absolutely. I'm pro-desert. But again, I'm biased because I live on the outskirts of the desert. You got to explain what a picking attachment. I'm the slow kid in the sewing class. Oh. No, there is no sewing. No slow kids in the sewing class. We're all... Still kind of like, you know, I'm a perpetual student. I thought I would never say that. If I make that, fun of, sorry. If you hold that thought for a few minutes, Dose, I will show you mine. It'll okay. be easier than trying to explain it. And these, oh, this is an old leather case. YouTube, these are there's scissors in here. I use my old Hooter cases for scissors. <laughs> I have quite a few, but these are pinking shears. They're basically pre-serger. They were to uh, make sure you didn't have frayed edges while you were sewing. Do you know what's so funny looking at these? I told someone one time, they're like, I have a serger. I'm like, I have pinking shears, man. Times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's because I was anti-serger until I got one that actually worked. And it changed now my life. <laughs> now your poor pinking shears don't get any love. These are actually um, one of my main museum pieces. I can't remember. These were my um, either my father's or my grandmother's. So these are older than me. Wow. So, um, and I remember playing with these as a kid and asking that question of like, Boy, come here. Let me teach you something. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, these, that's why they're in this ancient, ancient case. And these wisps are um, definitely older than I am, for sure. Nice. These wisps are old. These were my grandmothers. So, I know they're probably double, uh, you know, probably. They're, it's, they're probably older than I think they are. So, I keep them in here. Just so they oh, don't get messed with. And I needed something to do with all these because I have a ton of these old cases. Well, then you like strap it to your belt and they're handy all the time. 
DJ Jones is an attachment that cuts an edge that zigzags back and forth to present to prevent fraying. Butterfly, oh, uh, butterfly lives all over. She's like <laughs> a vaudeville actor. I wish I was like a vaudeville actor. You get a cool coat, a bunch of props, floppy hat. <laughs> Every day is a school day, but if you're still acting like high school kids, some <laughs> no joke. I'm actually like, there are people I know. One is in their late forties, and another is in their fifties, and they seriously act like they're in high school. One works at a high school, <laughs> and she's a cheer coach, <laughs> but they act like children. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. They're extremely immature. I That's had some good. of them. I had some of those. Picking shears, like honestly, picking shears remind me of being a little kid. Of like asking my grandma, what are you doing? I remember being so small that like you had to look up over the table. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you doing? You know. But I grew up around people that wanted to educate you, that wanted you to know what they were doing. Never knew what they were for. I thought it was just a cool design. <laughs> hey, I would cut them with paper until I got yeah. caught. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do make some for paper and decorative edges and things like that. You're not slow. You were just uninformed. I think I used that exact pair cutting paper like 30, uh -oh. 40 something years ago. Uh-oh. And you're still with us? <laughs> <laughs> Remember the wasabi commercials? I loved them so absolutely. I remember the wasabi commercials. I don't know the wasabi commercials. Do you remember the Orbitz commercials when they first came out? Um, Do you have a dirty mouth? <laughs> I'm not oh, British, yes. so I don't have that fancy accent. <laughs> Some lures are made to catch fish. Some lures are made to catch fishermen. <laughs> Sewing things are the exact same thing. <laughs> for, <laughs> for real. I love different types of foods. Just drop me somewhere. I'll, I'll find food to eat. Absolutely. Is butterfly time traveling? Uh, maybe. <laughs> if I were here in the future I thought of there I thought there was an art related because I was good at arts and crafts well, same same you're not I, wrong I grew up in a house of like colored pencils and sketchbooks mm-hmm and you can totally use pinking shears on paper just don't use the sewing pinking shears <laughs> on paper. <laughs> I think it's because I was the youngest. Like, I was that kid. They were like, these ones are for cutting. Don't touch my sewing scissors. <laughs> I remember my grandmother <laughs> telling me the same thing. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, one day I looked at my dad. I was like, man, for somebody who was so done with kids, how come you had so many? And he just started laughing. By the time I came around, I, they were like over it. <laughs> they those were those were awesome commercials. Those were awesome commercials. I might be time traveling to oh well. It's okay. I constantly <laughs> check to make sure I'm not time traveling. It's different though, because there's I'm one of those people who watches live streams after they've been on. Because there's certain people I love watching because I'm always sewing. Mm. Or sometimes but, you pause it for a minute and then you come back. and. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or because of these Bluetooth speakers, I'll walk out of the room because I can hear it throughout my entire house. <laughs> I have Shalimar take that to take it, take that to the bank stuck in my head. Seriously, my son, like in his head, one day my son is going to be like, you know, Pops, it's not 1981. Get over it. 
I love Shalimar, but I honestly think that he's more of a chill person because he grew up to me listening. Like he grew up listening to oldies. Texas is hot, but where I live isn't desert. Mm. Oh, butterfly, you're time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here for you in the future. Oh, uh, sorry, the king's no. lost. Oh, no. You know, I had big plans. I need to sit down sometimes, though, because I sew more than the average human. I sew so much, it's uh, it's unreal. Well, it's your hobby. I found an 80s Mega Mix on here that was made half as a joke. I enjoy every <laughs> second of it. Do you know what's so funny? Like... Um, it's the strangest thing. People always say, oh, I, I'm before a certain time. I'm just into certain eras of music. And I don't discriminate. Like, I'm into modern stuff. If I There is one song that I bumped that everybody would laugh at me if I told you what I've been listening to. And I don't now, even know what's I, going on. Now you have to say. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Which I, one? Like, I like the one, um, the, that one, that one I showed you. The video I showed you? Because I'm too old. I needed you to help me <laughs> interpret some of the things in the... <laughs> I didn't know what they said. I know, but she... <laughs> you know. The subtitles on. She's not... A... <laughs> oh, please, go ahead. <laughs> my whole problem with rap music, I can't understand half of what they're talking about. I don't get half of the references, and I don't get 80% of the times they're referring to some other person whose lyrics I haven't understood. <laughs> well, I loved I loved the song. <laughs> Even though I'm like 20 something years older than this person, I loved the song. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some stuff has, you know, a great vibe, you like the beat, but a lot of times I struggle to understand what they're saying. Kirk Cobain <clears throat> kind of said it the best. You like the song, but you're not listening to the words. <laughs> Well, Kurt Cobain then should have sung with better diction because, you know, if we can't understand what you're saying, you can't blame us for not interpreting the song properly. Are you still mad at Kurt 20 something years later? Yes. <laughs> he did destroy uh, modern rock. Like, he did. Like, I was really into Faith No More that whole era. And he did like just single handedly Nirvana brought down that whole 120 minutes era. And they had to change <laughs> their whole format. Savage is the only Megan Stallion one I know. See, I don't even know that song. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> Gilbert should have often felt sooner. Kilroy is not a Nirvana fan, <laughs> it destroys the rock. You know, it's so funny, like, uh, still to this day, I won't rock a Nirvana t-shirt. It's just, it was like, right, it's really funny. And that was my era, too. It's really funny. I have to have an interpreter for rap. I love rap. I, I grew up from the um, late 80s on, so I'm so biased when it comes to rap. And oddly, death metal, too. Just like hockey, it's soothing to me. But rap is, that's, you know, I'm biased. <laughs> We could have some neat stuff if it wasn't for whiny mealy mouth. <laughs> we need to bring back mealy mouth. Stone Cold Steve Austin used to say that to everybody. Pull up, boy. We need to bring that back. Kurt Cobain and that group never killed rock. They weren't that important. Wow. I think what it was. I did not it, know. Here, here's my argument. I think what it was is they were like new and different and they got played everywhere. And so then all the people were like, oh, we have to find more stuff like this. They're from Seattle. Let's go to Seattle. And it's kind of so I don't think that that Nirvana set out to destroy rock. But I think that they were part of part of the I don't know. Do you like um, Soundgarden? Um. 
I like Soundgarden better than Nirvana. Alice in Chains. I really used to like Alice in Chains a lot. They they would have never existed if it wasn't for Kurt Cobain. We would well, have never heard of them because they're they're from the same area, and they had that like flannel ripped jeans sound. Right, but I'm not. I don't think that Kurt Cobain Kurt Cobain was directly involved in that. I think that they were more the inspiration for the the people to go looking for more we stuff. Leave Kurt alone. No, it's okay, Nightmare Baby. It's okay to stand your ground and defend Kurt Cobain. It's okay. No one is being judged here. We're just saying opinions. I'm shocked that people. You know why? It's because I'm from an area where that man is praised. And so it's weird to me that people don't like Nirvana. I'm indifferent. I am so indifferent. But it's weird, though, because I own um, Alice in Chains is, is my group. I um, obsess I still own CDs. It's not a secret. But I um, Black Hole Sun is my song from Soundgarden. And shout out to that one summer where MTV played it every other song. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Kilroy. <laughs> the music industry twisted this scene, only giving certain sounds and music types. Very true. Mm -hmm. I'm just exiting my TARDIS. Absolutely, Butterfly. I live in one. <laughs> and for the love of all that is holy, Nirvana is not oldies. Don't play it on the oldies station. They do here. They do here. Neil Young was a first grunge rocker. I'm going to say something really controversial. I love Neil Young. I he had this album. I can't remember. It was like early two thousands because I was I was out in like the real workforce. And um, KLOS back when it was KLOS, they played this entire Neil Young album. I ran out and bought it. I'm gonna have to go look and see which one it was. But I I was surprised, and he released that album. Yeah, it was a George Bush album. Like he was talking about George Bush, so it was uh, in the early two thousands. I'm just exiting my TARDIS. Yay, hey, butterfly! Welcome back. Welcome back. I just got that, so I'm exiting my TARDIS too. <laughs> I'm telling you, I time travel heavy on certain streams. That's why I'm constantly looking. Crazy Horse. Absolutely love Crazy Horse. No worries. Stand your ground. Harvest Moon. Absolutely. I think that's what it was. It was a really political album. And I was young and impressionable, so it really stuck to me. And I was mopping. <laughs> I worked at this place called Togo's. And it was a Togo's Baskin Robbins in North Hollywood. And the store was, was oddly huge. And we would clean at the end of the night. And we would do, you know, sanitary, deep clean. And um, long story short, they played that whole album. Oh. On KLOS. And we were bumping on the heavy speakers. I missed that job because the boss knew that. Even back then, like, they knew we were broke. And they were like, eat whatever you want. And we're not going to charge you. Nice. And we, were, we were just a bunch of broke kids. I use Neil Young as a write-in candidate when there's nobody running for a seat. And when I don't like the person running. <laughs> hey, if you... Well, no, he's not um, He's not a citizen. I was about to say, if, if that catches on, you could probably get him to vote him in. Hey, they voted Arnie in. We need to have ranked choice voting so that people can vote for the people they would like to vote for. And ensure that whole stupid funding thing and make their opinions known, but also not feel like their vote is being wasted or not. They don't have to have a battle with their integrity and the reality of our most our mostly two party system. We you need mean, choice voting. You mean you don't want to vote for Ralph Nader or London LaRouche? Do you remember London LaRouche? He ran for like 30 years. He was on the ballot forever. You know what? If I'm a if I have that much money, I'm not gonna run for president every year and lose. I'm gonna go take a vacation in the Poconos or something. <laughs> London LaRouche, Ralph Nader, they would run every year. Every year. 
Black Hole Sun is a great song. And now we're in the Togo story portion of the show. Torgo, Togo's was amazing. I worked at the one in North Hollywood. I met Mr. Cooper. Mark Curry is a stand-up human being. I'll spare you this story, but he hung out with me and smoked a cigarette with me and didn't shush me. <laughs> I met Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus is 5'3", 5'4". Huh. Nice guy. Sean Hayes. I'm in um, John Cryer at the, just at this one store. It was in North Hollywood. Contrary to popular belief, all the studios are in North Hollywood, not in Hollywood. <laughs> La <clears throat> LaRouge is too gay for the name for a lot of America doomed from the start. London LaRouche ran for as long as I could remember. What's your mug look like? <laughs> Could it be the Holy Grail? This is from Schultz Pottery. I go to the Renaissance Fair and get stuff from them. This may or may not be a vest, uh, a vase, but I use it as a cup. My head turned when you said vest. I was like, can you wear that cup? I'm listening. <laughs> Oh, speaking of um, listening, um, please explain thread counting to me again, like I'm five. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, okay. So the fabric is made by a bunch of threads going this way. Okay. And then a bunch of threads, threads going this way, the warp and the weft. Hold on. The warped and the, the weft. Warp, w-a-r-p. W -A -R -P. Okay. Weft. W E F T. So warp, warp is up. Warp is warp. up and down. Warp weft like goes across, and I remember that because the letter F has the little things. The two, the two, the letter F has the two things that go across. So the number of threads that go this away and this away in a square inch is your thread count. And so, generally speaking, um, the the fabric will ha like drape better with a higher thread count, especially if it's very fine threads, but lots of lots of them. Um, but on the other hand, you might want like say a rustic linen or something that has a lower thread count and has lots of air in between it, lots of space. So, oh. um, oftentimes sheets. Um, the good ones have a really high thread count, which gives them like a suppleness and also a durability. So I'm kind of remembering our conversation from last time. Mm -hmm. Is this why all my grandma's sheets are quality and lasted like literally 40, 50 years because mm -hmm. they had a higher thread count? Yeah, if you get like, you know, long staple cotton and high thread count. Whereas something like burlap is like a coarse <laughs> thread, but that has low thread count. Because there's lots of, you can see there's lots of space in between the threads. Not very many per square inch. Oh, that reminds me. I forgot to buy that. They sell um, burlap at, um... oh, Nightmare Baby, I think you're time traveling again. They <laughs> sell burlap um, at my local Walmart. Like wearable burlap, but it looks so itchy. Hmm. And they don't sell it by the yard. They sell it by the centimeter. <laughs> by the centimeter? I said out loud. I was like, oh, this is it from America. And people were looking at me like, sir, you just can't count. <laughs> <laughs> Even my son was like, do you, need to, do you need the conversion? I'm in school right now. I know this. <laughs> Yes, like Egyptian cotton sheets can be 800 thread count and last a long time. I always wondered why Egyptian um, cotton was so coveted. My mm -hmm. grandma had a ton. Egyptian cotton, the um, the the strands of that make up the cotton bowl, they're longer. And so because they're longer, when they're twisted together to make the thread, you have fewer like pokey out ends. We're so, learning stuff tonight here in the house <laughs> of sewing. 
I had to ask because Kilroy is right. I completely forgot what you told me last time because I was like <laughs> trying to think. I was like, oh, crud. I completely forgot what Waternay told me. But now I will remember this one. And if I ask you next week, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> weft. Weft sounds like marriage. <laughs> Yeah, some words do sound like you've got a speech impediment. <laughs> Which, for anyone who does, um, I went to speech therapy and I literally used to talk like marriage. And in my 40s, I can kind of speak English properly. Higher thread counts get hot, though. Keep that in mind. High thread count sheets were one of the world's worst <laughs> decisions in my life. <laughs> Well, you know, different sheets for different seasons. I am a um I'm a literal human heater. So I need I guess a lower thread count. Like I'm a hot body and I'm not saying that as a compliment or like I'm cool. I am physically a warm human. Well, you maybe need some lightweight linen sheets. It's just in cotton must have thread count or it's BS marketing. Mm -hmm. Cool things I never knew that. Glad to help. I don't do a hot better pillow. Same dose. Same. I will wake up, flip the pillow, and go right back to sleep. But again, I am a literal, like, I am a human heater. I'm that guy in the Fantastic Four that's on fire and flies around. <laughs> you should maybe get one of those. Um... <laughs> How can we sense when the bed earth is turning? And the bed's burning song. Anyway. But um, they make a mattress topper that goes, you know, under your sheets and stuff. And it has heating and cooling. So you can set it to like just the right temperature and have a cool bed, which is supposed to give you better sleep. Maybe you should invest in one of those. That's why I was thinking about um, getting a water bed. Mm, but then I have this... A sneezing problem. Like if I get cold, like I'm Goldilocks because I'm always hot. So if I if my body starts cooling down, I start sneezing um, because I have an elevated body temperature. The water bed might be hard to regulate, and it's going to jack up your homeowner's insurance. And <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody. They can, be, <laughs> they can be hard on your back. Um, why don't you get one of the mattress toppers? that has sensors in it and can keep your body at just the right temperature. I kind of want to live in the South. So I'm going to build. And since I'm not going to move to the South, I'm going to build a, one of those outdoor rooms with just like a screen. <laughs> and I'll put a water bed out there. Actually, that was quite popular in Victorian times to have a sleeping porch so that you could get airy sleep. I'm a furnace. Even in the dead of winter, high thread count would wake me up in a puddle of sweat. I'm the same. It's the strangest thing. Kilroy, I have to change my undershirt because I'm such a heater. Kilroy also needs one of those mattress toppers. I got two cooling pillows and they get work out every night. See, I'm, I'm glad to know that I'm not the only hot body on earth. Don't get a damn water bed. You'll come home one day and there'll be water all over the place. That's why I was thinking about putting it outside on the patio. Then I'll, you know what, though? There is uh, uh, the raccoon will just be like, thank you. Man, you got grapes back here. You got food and a water bed. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put a trail cam in my backyard because that raccoon... Um, he he patrols my backyard at night now. Hmm. I can hear him on the roof. Well, is he keeping the riffraff out or is he just bringing more riffraff? Raccoons are the riffraff. <laughs> well, but you know, this there's, savage, there's the riffraff, you know, and then <laughs> this savage ate um, every bottle of sunscreen that is left outside the raccoon eats. It ate my pineapple. I told you I was nursing that pineapple. I felt like a real home farmer because I had a baby pineapple and that thing waited until it was edible and said, pluck, because <laughs> raccoons have thumbs. 
I'm still mad. I'm still mad. And the funny thing is, he has a round head. He looks like a panda bear. Everyone in the neighborhood is like, oh, he's so beautiful. I'm like, do not name that thing. <laughs> They are so cute, though. They really are. Yeah, and dying from easy preventable disease was popular in Victorian times, too. It's called AC. We don't have to take the bad. We can just take the good. I love that guy from Princess Bride, too. That is my line. Mewage. I've always wanted to sleep outside in the Joshua Tree National Forest Park under the stars. Okay. um, I've done that, Butterfly. It's amazing. I've done that. When I was a kid, um, my parents bought a camper and all of a sudden we became campers and we went everywhere. I've done that under the stars with no tent or anything. It's beautiful when you see the Milky Way. It's unreal. I love um, going outside like that. Raccoons suck. They killed a whole coop full of my chickens once. Most people are not fans of raccoons. I, I'm not. <laughs> My camping days are over and my bed is tuned into my is <laughs> is tuned into my back and my back is tuned into my bed. <laughs> Looks like a crook with a mask. I'm not a fan of raccoons, man. They uh, if you eat sunscreen, I think you're disgusting. Sorry. If you eat sunscreen, I think you're disgusting. <laughs> and then I, I I thought like you know, I I kind of thought okay, maybe it's not the raccoon. My son literally um, found it. Sorry, I had to mute myself because he opened the door and he was singing with his headphones on and he doesn't realize <laughs> how loud he is. They do. So they are crooks. <laughs> he looks like a crook without that man. Without the man. <laughs> They, dose. they are crooks. I am not a fan of raccoons. Literally, figuratively, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I am not a fan. So I have a question if we're done talking about raccoons. Go ahead. Um, Alibaba, will this foot fit on that little um this the the oh dang it, singer 27 that's behind me? Maybe I could try it out and you could tell me, no, not like that. And for the record, Kilroy, yes, raccoons are just like goats. They will eat almost anything. They're gross. But at least a goat has a job. They go up on hills and do brush clearing. Goats have their their W-2s clear. <laughs> they clear background checks. They fill out W-2s, W-4s. They fill out everything. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't done any work on that 27. So let me make sure it, you know, turns over and um, we'll try it out. Oh, me, hmm? sorry. This is a quick friendly reminder from the House of Sewing. Um, don't forget to do your taxes. <laughs> I owe it. And if you owe money, I'm. if you owe money, hold on. Hey, hey, if you owe money, you're not alone. It's okay. You see the look on my face? It's because I owe money. That's okay. You're okay. You'll be okay. <laughs> and when you and when they're paving that street, you say, hey, I paid for that street. That's my street. <laughs> <laughs> they should name it after you. They should name it after all of us. <laughs> you pay for a lot of streets with your <laughs> big ass heavy boat of a truck. <laughs> I need some deductibles. I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt a cactus or something. Like I need some <laughs> deductible. <laughs> but I'm not gonna give the tax speech. Goats are terrorists. I already did my taxes and sent them in. You can milk goats too. There's a goat Ugh. farm next to the property by my job. I've oh. never tasted it. And they, oh. con do you know what's so funny? When my predecessor was alive, um, he was my boss. So I'd be like, hey man, they're trying to give me free goats. He would look at me and be like, do not get a goat. Now that I'm in charge, guess what I haven't got for free ever. And they're like, do you want a goat? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Well, you could get a couple goats and some fencing, and then instead of having to go out, out there with your weed whackers and lawn equipment, 
you could just fence off the area and throw the goats in there and just like, shift it around. But they don't play. You get an Henri one, it'll ruin your life. They had, but it'll put they'll put you in the hospital. It just dislocate your hip. Like goats are fun until you live with them <laughs> or work with them. Maybe you should just rent the goats when you need when you need field clearing done. In the east, if you haven't done your taxes by now, you're in for a late fee. <laughs> Claim the sewing machines as the pendants from get you lots of money. <laughs> oh. DJ Dose, the baby ones will jump on me and jump off my back. The kid love the kids love doing that at my friend's place. Ouch. I will love I would love to camp in some national forest. I I loved when I was a kid, we went all over. And you know what? It, it's you know, America, a lot of people don't realize America is humongous. We live in these little pockets of society, but no matter where you live, you live near a national park. Mm -hmm. no matter where you live i've been i've been crazy places like mount whitney in california calico with the gorge it's 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 they're beautiful place i'm a cowboy kind of person so i love calico because it's a cowboy town except for the fading ones they're cool <laughs> there's a goat farm a, like a property up they're nuts but they eat all the grass on the hill, so they're invited over. Goat milk is pretty good. And if you have any kind of acid reflux problem, their milk will be easier on your system than cow's milk. A lot of people do have an easier time digesting it. However, I cannot get it past my taste buds. I was like that with soy milk. My brain, my brain told me, how do you milk a bean? <clears throat> how do you milk a bean? I couldn't drink it. <laughs> Uh, Ali Baba's asking me if I'm going to try that yeah. foot. Yes, but so let me let me show um, this to Dose so I can get it out of the way. Dose, this is a um, this is a pinking attachment, and so um, there's the there's the part where your your foot runs the fabric through, and your um, and the bar goes up and down with your needle to do your sewing, and so you attach this on the bar on the needle bar that goes up and down and then that it has little gears that turn and this gets rolled under and your fabric passes through and instead of scissors with the teeth on it this little rotary blade will cut a pinked edge on your fabric this one happens to be the wavy edge instead of the pointy one but you can put different blades on it and so this, instead of having to manually do it with scissors, you run this through your machine and you can set how far you want it from the edge and you run it through the machine and it'll cut a little um, pink edge on your fabric. Oh, that's cool. And um, this Oh, one, and it's Singer too. Yeah, it's from Singer. And... <clears throat> Depends on how crazy the bidders are on the auction, the condition it's in, if it comes with a box, blah, blah, blah. And they have some that are manual that have like a little crank that you attach to your table. Um, but this one is the one that goes on the machine itself. And they run, you can get them as low as uh, I want to say like $45 you can oh, also really? spend 145 depending on the auction etc that's good to know because you introduced me into something I don't have in this room and <laughs> the the want and the need are in a fist fight right now <laughs> in the back do I want this do I need it no <laughs> <laughs> that is cool you totally need it Kilroy is right. Like you could, I'm not saying don't leave America, but you could travel from sea to shiny sea, you know? This is true. You can and see. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just agreeing with you. You can see all the terrain. Even like when I was in New Mexico, I went to, um, I saw crazy caves. I didn't even know they existed. <laughs> and I went there and I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Especially the Southwest. It's beautiful. But again, I'm a homer. I've been all through Canada, and I think Canada is beautiful as well. 
Don't worry, yeah, Will. You'll never <laughs> find one in Goodwill. <laughs> I go to antique shops, and my problem is, like, there will never again be another Rooster's Relics. Like, um, Roos the guy at Rooster's Relics gave me really good prices for antiques. He sold me a um, 1911 Singer for 40 bucks, a 1908 for like 40, you know, with that, with that trash table. So that spoiled me to antique, antique stores because there's an antique mall by my house and they want anything like and, and i get it they look old they look cool but they want 200 bucks for broken sewing machines that are like 1920 1930s they look cool but they're trashed mm. yeah sometimes it's hard when sometimes people don't know what they've got and sometimes that works in your favor and other times they've just gone and and done some ridiculous price on the something. Dose, I am the king of that. I will learn something and then I run and I'm like, did you know that in 1942, blah, 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 blah. And I act like I'm the authority and I literally learned it 15 minutes before. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think of, let me put this. I'm going to make you big real quick because I'm going to go grab a cinnamon roll. Okay. Well, or do you want? Well, I'm still trying to set up here, okay. so I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second. Top of things people want me to be. Since it's a cinnamon roll kind of night. Um. Pardon me. I had my setup for chat. I did not have my setup for display. Okay, so this is a lovely Singer Twenty Seven with the Sphinx decals, and it's in. It's in moderate condition. It's one of those where it, you know, it's got some wear. Someone did that stupid situation where they, where they, um, out, where they wrapped the fabric around it and stabbed it with pins as though they hadn't paid the equivalent of an automobile for this machine. I hate um, when people do that. So it's got some, but other than that, the decals are in relatively good condition. Um, it needs cleaning. Done anything to it yet? Put it on the sofa table and admire it. This is a twenty-seven. It takes a long bobbin. You can tell from the long bobbin winder that's on the front here. It did come with a bobbin that you can see here the little thing that looks like a i don't know a, this thing right here and this is the machine from the underside for the inquisitive it's very simple on the underside compared to some of the modern zigzag ones there's another view of the bobbin uh, so let me turn this around. Oh, look at this lovely embossing on the nose plate. So pretty. Stuff they don't put detail in anymore. Okay. So um Alibaba, where does this go? You said that the clamp goes needs a feed dog cover yeah i have some spares um i just don't have one on this machine we'll just we're, we'll pretend i'm not putting fabric through here right now um that shuttle is wrong <gasps> scandal scandal i did not put the shuttle in there i was all excited that it came with but clearly that was just I was premature with my excitement, but that's okay. I'll use it on another machine because the sewing gods know I have enough of them. <laughs> if it doesn't fit this machine, it probably fits another one. <laughs> so take the needle clamp off. Oh, that was something that I didn't check. 
to see if the needle clamp will unscrew. Ah, oh good, it does. All right, oh wait, hold on. This needle clamp is, oy. let me raise it back up again. Oh yeah, this shuttle is rubbing. Sorry, I had to go get some cinnamon rolls. I bought some today and I had to put uh -huh. them, I had to heat them up. I understand. Oh. oh, the shuttle is correct. It's just in the wrong way. Aha. Okay. So this is the little tiny short needle. How cute. It is, oh, I don't have a, the rulers are behind me, but this needle is probably only about an inch and a half long. Which is kind of short. And so I take the clamp off. This is the needle clamp, which looks like, oh, I see why you were saying that's a clamp. Yeah, there's no hole in that one for the needle. It's just a, <clears throat> a compression. And is, is that is a 8303 shuttle. I don't know. Let's see, is there a push button on this? No, that's with the 66. Um, oh yeah, this is like upside down. How did they, hmm. I wonder if I can push it out from underneath. Oh, you know what? This is when I can use one of those little things that I put the cork on that are in the other room. Let's see. Hmm. Aha. All right. So for the curious, this is what the bobbin case looks like. Some of them, they call this like a, a, a bullet shuttle sometimes. There's have some you ever seen open. that Aaron Eckhart movie where they have to, it's called The Core. Ouch. <laughs> that <laughs> no, looks I like the vehicle they use in The Core. <laughs> And this is the this is the bobbin. A lot of the modern bobbins look like two little round discs. William can show you one. I'm sure he's got one handy. But this will go when you want to wind the bobbin. This pops in here. Let me try to show you without blocking the view. So this will pop in here. Ah, it's reversed. Okay. Okay, so this pops in here, and and then the thread, oh, no, I don't have it in properly, because I'm trying to do this in the camera. Okay, so this pops in here, and the thread will, like, wind around the top and come, come down here. There's a, um, and so then the thread, as you turn it, when you have this engaged, this pushes up onto the, um, onto the belt, because this machine should be in a treadle table. And so the, the belt will go through here. And so then you push this back onto the belt. Pardon me, my bobbin came out. Um, and so then when you push the treadle and make the belt move, then the then this turns, which goes on the uh, sorry, let's backwards. Okay, pretend that's still there. So this will turn and it this this little gear thing has teeth on it and it's a um, it's got kind of a heart shape, which makes the little arm go back and forth and it'll wind your bobbin for you. Um, I will do a lovely video that shows in detail. When you should I'm just, you should, you know what? I'll cut this for you and send it to you. <laughs> this whole segment is a video right here. Oh, well, this is, this is not the footage that I would want for my video because it is, it is absolute chaos with my hands in the way. So, but anyway, so that's how that goes. But meanwhile, back to this foot. 
that Alibaba's probably been shouting at me about in the comments. Okay, install the needle clamp, darning foot slash stripper foot. So can everybody see? Where I'm from, it's not um, okay to call someone stripper foot. It's derogatory. Dun, dun, dun. We call them entertainers. Exotic dancers. They're exotic feet. But then you know that's problematic too because you know what if it's a what if it's a foot of color from a foreign country? How dare we call that exotic? Okay, so you install the <laughs> the clamp, <laughs> the new clamp. Uh, darning foot, stripper foot. Um, so does this go on, does this Alibaba go on sideways? Because otherwise I'm not going to be able to turn the, oh, I should take the other foot off, right? I should. Oh, mm, that might be easier said than done. Uh, do you know what's funny? Um, Ouch. I was filming myself and I almost don't want to show it. I had to take my serger half apart just to, to undo one screw. And I was embarrassed of how much I had to take my serger apart. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is now unscrewing. I managed to get it because I am... Oh, well, you know, it works better if you turn it the right direction. Absolutely, Dose. You should buy a sewing machine. Um, I don't know if it, if it saves money... <laughs> But I oh. like I love making my own clothes. Um, Waternay, do you think making your own clothes saves money? Um, not really, because fabric is expensive, and so is your time. Um, That's what I was thinking, especially like with my fabric habit. Like it's basically the same as someone who goes to the store and just buys a bunch of clothes. The the thing with making your own clothes, though, is you can oftentimes get better fabric than is readily available on clothing nowadays. True. You can get custom to your measurements and things depending, you know, which if you were to do have <laughs> custom tailored clothes, that would actually cost you quite a bit. So I Tell guess my. if we're talking comparable, then it does save you money. DJ Joe says, tell my wife I spent all my money on strippers' feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that exact that, that excuse would not fly. <laughs> so Alibaba, do I need to I need to put this sideways, I guess, right? Because otherwise the otherwise the um presser foot bar is in the way. Except this is not going out here. Let me unscrew the screw. I would love to make hats. I'm a hat collector and love bucket hats. You could, I, um, man, I need to make a koofy. A couple years ago, I went insane making koofies and bucket hats. I made over a hundred koofies. I have bucket hats all in this room. I made a few, a few like LL Cool J style hats. Making hats is fun. Dose, I love making hats. Mm, goodness, sharp, rusty things. I should get a tetanus shot. That is right <laughs> way there. That is the right way. Okay, excellent. Do you know there was a doctor who was so unimpressed by my biker ways. Um, she was like, you just look like you need a tetanus shot. So I've had one recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, hmm, what is the best way to... You get satisfaction and you feel proud of what you made. I, I love yes. I love that question. When someone's like, where'd you get that? I puff up and I'm like, I made that. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse so, me. I puff up real quick when someone says hmm. that. Yeah, you should be proud of your art. Instar install the stripper foot with the needle. Yeah, I'm trying, but you know. It's a little uncooperative. Let's see. So how far? Okay. Oh, I've got the needle on the wrong foot, the wrong side of the foot. That's the problem. Absolutely. Joy says, DJ, you need to get a machine and go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. You can I've enjoy made... making... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying that DJ could en enjoy making some, um, making some hats. 
I love you know I went crazy and again I would like to thank everybody who is still here after my hat and koofy era <laughs> I made hundreds of koofies hundreds oh works better when you've got the foot all the way on what is a good brand maybe something I can get used okay so um depending on um I would say go to like the Goodwill, go to a thrift store and buy an older sewing machine from the 70s or down. There's a lot of troubleshooting you're, you're going to have to do, but in the end, it's going to last longer than something that's modern made because yeah. I can't say it properly. Is it called pla planned obsolescence? Yeah. Most things are made to break now and so sewing machines are not exclusive <laughs> from that list at all. I would say... Get yourself a vintage Kenmore. Yes. From, from probably like the 50s. They're made like tanks. They're not overly complicated. If you get one with cams, then you can get some, some like decorative stitches and blind stitches and all of that kind of thing. And it'll, it'll be well built. Because they're so well built, it's highly unlikely there's going to be anything like really wrong with it. You can easily get, you know, bobbins and stuff like that. Oh my word! Where's don't my listen shark? to Kilroy. Don't get a touch and sew. They're like terrible. <laughs> Where's my shark? No, Joy made me freaking jump when she said shark. I own a shark. I did a video about my shark when I bought it because I read the reviews and I was like. People hate sharks. My shark works well. I th it's I think shark stuff works well, but for much less money, a vintage Kenmore will be better made. I agree. And last you a lifetime. It'll sew, especially if you want to sew hats. You'll be able to sew through the canvas, which that a lot true. of mo modern machines will struggle with. You do need something with strength if you're going to sew. I didn't think about that because I destroy sewing machines. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I should grab like a, well, no, I don't have any, I don't have this machine threaded or anything. This is not in any condition. Now I have the touch sewing. and sew and commercial in my head. <laughs> Just ask around people I have them sitting in storage so true or someone that you love could be like man I've had this machine sitting in my house for 20 years go right ahead <laughs> but um so here is the foot that I believe is installed properly and so if we drop this like we're going to pretend we're sewing um the thing is though um this seems like it's awfully high up that's not going to come. I don't Great. Know. Turn it oh. over a couple times and see Wait, if it's going to no. sew. Yeah. I have the need. The needle isn't quite aligned. It's not going through the hole. I think it's just tilted. But you don't use it. So it will last forever. Okay. There it goes. <laughs> if you get a camera, you'll follow I, all kinds of YouTube to get help. Uh, a few of my videos might pop up too. I own so many Kenmore's. I laughed when Waternay pulled out a Kenmore. I was like, I legitimately have that same machine. <laughs> exact same machine. It's just too heavy to be carting around this room. Can you um can you hide the comments for a second, William? I can't get the, any better angle to Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Um, oh here, this'll do. All right. So this is the foot installed, and you can see the little bouncy bouncy. And that is installed, even though it's a foot, it's not on the um, it's not on the presser bar where you would normally put a foot. Instead, it's on the needle bar, as Alibaba explained. And so when it goes down, trying to get a good angle for you. Okay, so when it go when the needle bar drops, you can see this is gonna bounce on your fabric. And then come back up. And so this is good if you want to do darning, free motion quilting, etc. How delightful. And instead of paying a small fortune, $100, uh, for a darning foot, 
nobody was bidding on this and I got it for ten dollars. What? Yeah. See, I never get deals like that ever on planet ever. Wow. Because I said stripping foot, I don't know what that is, but it looks like a darning foot. <laughs> and either way, <laughs> I don't have one of those, so I will bid. I like the I like that attitude. And yes, <laughs> Kilroy, I do have enough to open up a new Sears store. <laughs> yeah, if you were closer to us, Dose, we could we could hook you up. For real. Lovely vintage Kenmore. Uh oh. Like for uh -oh. real. I told you I'm taking it away. Oh, has my that actually happens to me all the time. There we go. Oh, wait, no. There we go. So Presto. <clears throat> Alibaba got his for 15 bucks Canadian. Actually, no, I lied. I got mine for five dollars. Wow. Or was Sorry. it ten and five dollars shipping? Whatever. Fifteen dollars US including shipping. I never get the deal, says the guy goes <laughs> looking for deals every day. Okay, so <laughs> it's not that I don't get deals, it's I do not find things like this necessarily. Because I'm looking for the bulkier big items and I'm obsessed with denim. Like when I go to like the uh, thrift store or I go to the, especially the SWAT meet because they'll have a denim coat that's, that's like 80 bucks retail. I'll pay five bucks for it. Even my bugle boy, I haggled down <laughs> and paid $8 and it is now my favorite vest, nice. but I'm still going to cover up the bugle boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really looking up button covers on Amazon, but I don't want to go too crazy. Ooh. Just in case anyone didn't get a good look before. So this squishes in like that so that it kind of glides over your fabric. I have to say LA has been picked through mostly for real though. <laughs> Wow, I I paid one thousand two hundred for my DJ controller. I need a cheaper hobby. So you know what's so funny? I'm sitting in a room of AV equipment, so I know, I know, like stuff gets pricey. Bugle Boy is your new name. <laughs> How about Paper Boy? At least Paper Boy had a great single. <laughs> thrifting is a hobby it is a hobby it's something i love to do you know i talk about this all the time i love haggling with vendors i don't know what it's it's in my blood to negotiate it's so funny like <laughs> and they're like the um husk verna i waited weeks for that thing and i i patiently would walk past it and I was surprised the guy said 20 bucks. I think I thought it was because it got rained on, but then when I opened it up, it was an all metal machine. Nice. Make sure I've got this needle in the right way. I love yeah. I I love the chase. Just like when yeah. I part of my gambling habit, I it wasn't even about gambling, it was about driving to Vegas, eating a Giro, going to thrift stores, like just too many times I pull over on the highway and just look up and see the Milky Way. Oh, so beautiful. You never get that here. <laughs> never. So I, I missed the. That's like um, part of the. I just missed the chase, really. Not even the, the destination. It's, it's getting there is more fun to me half the time. See, now, because my son, like, he's all into um, MMA, and part of me wants to take him to Vegas because that's the home of MMA right now. Yeah. But I would drive him crazy because I would turn a three-and-a-half-hour drive into, like, a five-hour drive because I'm going to pull over. <laughs> well, that's part of the adventure. So, Alibaba, this is the only number that I have found on this shuttle. <laughs> Right there, the zero one. Ah, so, oh, stupid autofocus. What's that oh, movie where that guy's writing that snuffleupagus? Is that the never ending story? Snuffleupagus? 
that's Sesame Street. I know. I'm just I'm being uh, facetious. Oh, I'm sorry. But there was that like fuzzy dog dragon thing in Neverending Story. Kilroy, I'm riding that dragon like that fuzzy dog thing in Neverending Story. <laughs> I can't remember that one's name. I have to head to the cocoon. Good night. Have a great night, Butterfly. Bye, Butterfly. I say this every time. I loved that movie. I loved Cocoon. Wil Wilfer. <laughs> I can't say his name properly. Wilfer Bremley for life. <laughs> I loved Cocoon. <laughs> have a great night, Butterfly. That is the original shuttle. It seemed like it. And then it goes, um, it goes this way, right? This way? It's been so long. I believe so. Pop it in and see what happens. Yeah, I think that's the way it goes. Remember the great space coaster. Oh, I am a, um, I'm a sci-fi geek. So anything in that realm, I am nostalgic for it. Especially Cocoon. Um, we watched that during the hurricane. <laughs> and oddly, we were in a weird room with a pool. The pool was empty, but we were in a weird room like that because it was the most reinforced place in the hotel because it was in the middle of the hotel. Mm. But they emptied the pool. Oh, goodness. Crazy memories. It, that hurricane was nuts. Oh, my word. Yeah. I mean, for years, it was the one they compared all the other hurricanes to. But to like... West Coasters, we don't experience weather like that. No. That, oh, that hurricane was, was scary. Well, my pressure foot doesn't go up and down anymore. Um, so, you know, this machine needs servicing. But there you go. It is a 803 shuttle. The latter 12728 is the 8202 shuttle. The oldest is the 8227 shuttle without the wasp waste. Okay. Good to know. Alibaba knows. That's why I ask certain questions, and really, I'm waiting for Alibaba to answer. Wasp waste. I got um, a bunch oh, of sewing man. machines, not because I was an expert, but because I wanted to learn to be. So you I know, know stuff I, from doing research, but still not an expert. So watching, sorry, you were saying watching you do this. Mm -hmm. I know a guy who needs help with about, I don't know, 25 sewing machines <laughs> like that. 30, 35, maybe 40, maybe. I don't know. I tell you what, you bring them over to my house and we'll we'll clean sewing machines together and we'll we can live stream and share with everyone. We'll have like proper camera set up. Actually, I should come to your house. I was about to you say I camera set up. I have a room full of boosters and cameras. I <laughs> I did pull out my old camera because it's starting to work again and I'm going to use it until it it's an original 4K camera like when 4K um, technology first came out but I dropped it oh no <clears throat> I thought oh, my goodness. YouTube career was over the day that I dropped it oh but that's the day I went and bought my Canon camera oh that hold on let me make you big that is coded well yeah it's, it is rusty and you can see where someone had the shuttle in the wrong way and it totally scratched up the plate the underside of the plate so I'm not moving to Cali. <laughs> you can come say, and visit. Alibaba, if you come over, I have about 90 vintage sewing machines. <laughs> I need you to look at. You can come and visit Alibaba. We can have a whole like a weekend sewing machine restoration thing. Butterfly can come. And then who's our friend who was in um in like Yuma, Arizona, who was going to visit. We haven't seen them around in a while. I'm not remembering their name because I'm bad with names. Sorry. Victoria, That's I, I miss um, Yuma is a perfect place to ride. Like Arizona is 
That's open country. That is open country over there. Now you got to drop all your cameras so they all have the same level of wear. It's like breaking in an engine. No, <laughs> man, this can't. When I dropped my 4K camera, I thought that was the end of my YouTube channel. And I ran to Best Buy, and I'm not going to say how much money I spent for my camera, but it was a lot. Oh, no. And your camera, kid. like, quit, quit, was was beyond repair? Is that what you're saying? The, it was at the time, but it, it fixed itself. Oh. See that? What's it saying? It's saying something. No, it's on standby. I can't believe this thing still works. This is... Um, this is literally the original um 4K technology. Wow. Like when it first, first, first came out. And there was a YouTuber who I I found out doesn't like people like me. But anyways, I was watching one of her live streams and she was like, um, she was like doing a um she was doing a drive to get one of these cameras, like a GoFundMe or something. And I I inherited one of these. <laughs> oh, no. So I walked over to the back and I was like, hey, thanks. So if it wasn't for that YouTuber, I would have never been on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and I figured it out. That's why even tonight when I had an actual opening, seriously, that's um, huge for me because it's taken me five years, not three, to get here. <laughs> I will have to go back and watch it. I missed the very beginning opening thing. Oh, don't okay. worry. I'm going to make you watch the whole thing when we're done with this. <laughs> okay, okay. I look forward to getting it with director's commentary. The file was too big. You know, because do you remember all those things I, I showed you from my my previous friend, my Australian friend, all that stuff that was saved in my, in my um, StreamYards account? I didn't even know. I forgot about it. And so it inspired me to make an opening. That just said, you know, that's just about me. <laughs> <laughs> and no hard feelings to anyone. I hope everyone's doing well. I I hope everyone's thriving. Meddling kids putting shuttles in the wrong way. Yeah, that happens <laughs> a lot, though. Honestly, that happens a lot when, especially when I buy antiques, you can tell who knew what they were doing and who did not. My 1950s singer that I call an industrial, the wiring was completely backwards because somebody got bored and didn't know what they were doing. And they wired the light where the motor was and the motor where the light was and then wondered why and then wondered why the machine oh didn't work. Oh dear. But that machine I got for um I got for uh 25 bucks. It was a 1950s with the table and everything. And I just reversed the polarity and it works. <laughs> Good old Doctor Who. I'm actually really proud of myself that I got my surgery going. But I'm going to start using this camera again. I'm going to get double cameras going in my videos. Nice. I miss this thing. And I know how to use this better than my Canon. And I've now had them for almost the amount. Like, you know, I've had them almost for the same amount of time. So I want to show everybody, these machines are heavy, so don't go put it on the dining table or you can regret it. Can you see all the scratches? This is why I made that sliding thing that I, of course, did not have on this. But this is a work table. Yes, but as someone who obsessively cleans, you use Old English or something, don't you? you do you use table polish? Your table looks amazing. Ah, uh, well, that's because I, like, I just made it. This is my, like, worktop thing. And you can, I don't know if you can see the scratches. Do you have, like, like the indentations in the wood from holding the machine around? So, but if I showed you the top of my desk, you would be like, get help, sir. Get help. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that as a warning to other people so they don't put it on their precious dining table and then cry afterwards. So. And then these are the tags that my friend made for me on her Cricut without subscription. <laughs> um, and so I put on 
the purchase date. It's a Singer 27. It's a Sphinx. I put the serial number, the year, the kind of machine it is. I gave the decals a rating. And I put what it has. Long bobbin, straight stitch. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then on the back of the tag, I have... Um, you know, if it's all like ready to go, which you can see up here, I've done nothing to it, but it has all its parts, except it needs. So you can get all stuff. fancy with a cricket. <laughs> this is making me want to get a cricket. I would put tags on everything in this room. <laughs> I'm a label guy. Like I found uh, my grandfather's 1990s label maker. I put labels on everything until the ink ran out. Fun, fun. <laughs> I definitely see now I'm going to go looking for my label maker and to a bit to uh, my so-called life coming near you. I found my fog machine juice. So I am now looking for my fog machine. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to some fun videos in the near future. There, there, the last time I used it was during COVID. I, my son and I got so bored one night. It was like 1030 at night. I looked at him. I was like, turn it on in here. We It looked <laughs> like a Pink Floyd concert up in here. And the worst part about it, I opened up my garage and still to this day, I'm shocked my neighbors didn't call the fire department. Oh, goodness. It was, it was for a good half an hour. Smoke was coming out. <laughs> And like, like you couldn't see my garage. It was so thick. It's a wonder you could breathe. You know what's really funny? Someone who I used to hang out with at the time was like, really? You have asthma and you did that in an enclosed room? I'm like, you're not fun. Don't make me block you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to have fun here. We're doing fun things. I'm a fun person. <laughs> All right. Oh, I should have here so I don't make people sick. I'm going to turn the camera off while I put my setup back on the stand. Your machine. <laughs> Your machine doesn't have tires. That would be like those horrible tractor like sewing machines, art interpretations. Oh. How do you feel about that when people don't turn sewing machines into art? That makes me sad. Don't make it so that it's not functional you know it's fine if you want to like display it and put some half bit of sewing or you know put a lamp behind it but don't don't wreck the machine willie nelson dose willie nelson performed at the performing arts center at near at the college near my house no joke he was smoking a joint in front of 15 cops like this willie nelson is no joke like openly, like it, it was the strangest thing to see. And I I was the youngest person in the room. I took my parents. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were the, my pops was the only one who knew the song, like the words to his songs. Like, can you really sing a Willie Nelson song that isn't the popular one? I don't even think I know the lyrics to any of the popular ones. But I did get this room, Willie Nelson, when I turned the fog machine on. It was crazy. See, now I want to find... I think it's back there with the land of missing sewing machine parts and serger parts. I covered it up because it's kind of it got shameful after a while. I was like, oh, man. I think it might be over there. My fog machine is in here somewhere. If the machine had nice decals or even rare machines, not a good idea to make a tractor art out of it. Well, okay. Uh, there's, um, I call, it's a wannabe Benny Hanna's. They cook in front of you. Okay. There's a place by my house. It's really fancy, actually. They have a koi pond. They have that weird sushi. Well, they got rid of that sushi conveyor belt from COVID. But they make really good sushi. sushi. It's a really expensive place. My son goes every year on his birthday. Last year, I noticed there was a white rotary sewing machine. I took a picture. I walked up to it. They glued the sewing machine so it doesn't move. No. 
I and I looked and then I asked them, hey, can I touch this? They're like, go right ahead. I stood on a thing and freaking open it was glued. It's like, their stuff. They glued up the inside. Yes. <gasps> because it was sitting at an angle, because I'm like, how can it just do that? And um, they basically uh, glued it. I'm so disgusted. I have to go make a call. <laughs> I'll be in the chat. I've seen rare decals and rare sewing machines made into low price tractor. That's crazy. He's been the same age forever, I think. He he found a special strain. Seriously, though, there's a lot of people like that. Um, let me see. Alexa, how old is Bobby Flay? Bobby Flay is 59 years old. For some reason, I thought he was older. Okay, that's a bad example. There's a lot of people where you're like, oh, you're what? But Willie Nelson definitely is aging backwards. He's got that Dick Clark strain where he's um, aging slowly. All Saints Thrift Stores does that with front window display machine hundreds. That's insane. That's insane to me. But again, what you do with your stuff is none of my business. I'm surprised. Like, this place is really fancy. They let me climb up on the chair and grab it because it was pretty high up. But once I stood on the, the chair, I was eye to eye with it. It's totally your business. Somebody has to protect the sewing machines. <laughs> yeah, but um, somebody, and I, I won't say exactly in which direction, but somebody who lives in my neighborhood um, gutted. I want to say probably the same uh, Sphinx singer that you pulled out and it just sits in front of their houses as, as um, lawn decoration. And I asked, I'm like, how come no one ever stole that? And the guy put, he um, put rebar at the bottom. So if you pulled it up, there's like a, if you're seven feet tall, you can get it out. <laughs> but he put rebar underneath it. And it's in my neighborhood. I'll take a picture for you. <laughs> I've they they know I'm the nosy neighbor because I walked by one day I was like, why is there a sewing machine out here? And I said it and I didn't know they were in their garage. <laughs> but yeah, he gutted it and everything. I know people people are crazy. See, but Wadene and I value sewing machines. A lot of people don't. I knew somebody who owned a bike shop. He had. Um, an old frame to a Cannondale bike sitting in front of his house growing um, you know it was like ivy growing into it that particular brand in the um, 80s and 90s were, were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars even now a refurbished Cannondale frame is worth a lot of money he had one just sitting in front of his house he knew the value and he still didn't care people are funny that way <laughs> Let me see what else I have on my notes here. We're two or two and a half hours in. I guess I'll start making a koofy. <laughs> let me see. Let me clear some. Let me clear this section here. Let me move my patch habit. I pretty much already oopsie shamed myself. Let's open this one up. It's just been sitting here adding to Mount Oopsie. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. I always jokingly talk about, um, I have a bath mat that looks like this. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. Hey, how's it going? Got you up on the TV. Won't be in the chat, but wanted to say hey. I don't I don't believe dog left after two and a half for real. I I man, i you're for seriously, Rashawn. And dog, if you're still there, we love you. <laughs> oh dog dog did a couple James Browns this evening. He didn't do the full concert. <laughs> you know, this is bigger than I thought it would be.
part of me just wants to leave it like this. <laughs> oh no, you got to flop it over. There we go. That's the funny thing when it comes to certain furry material, you really you really do not know how furry it is until you pull it out. Like this is not as thick as I thought it was. Hey, hey, hey. I think a koofy with a matching fur would be great. Hey, Rashad missed you, my darning foot. You missed my darning foot exhibit. <laughs> you did, you did. And Do Dose and I were taking notes. You know what? Let me grab that other material because I do have that other material. I have this. This is a little bit thicker. It more or less matches my coat. I can't say it matches my coat 100%. I've had this for years. I think I already made a koofy out of this material, but I think I'm going to. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this material because it kind of it matches my coat more or less. The red I'm going to make now that I see how much material this is, it's a lot more than I thought. So, <clears throat> I might do something crazy and make a shirt with it or something. I might. I don't know. Let me pull my table out. I've had this furry material for as long as I could remember. I had a giant patch of it, but I've been sewing on it for a while. Uh, you missed the stripping foot expedition. So let me grab my table and we'll, we'll uh, figure it out. You know, I constantly talk about being over ambitious, but I am an over ambitious human. I have four or five projects that I am like, I'm either working on or there's something like blueprints I have in my head of something that I'm going to do. And every time I pull my table out, I look and I'm like, oh, I have five other projects I need. I should be working on right now. <laughs> But it's been a while since I made a koofy, and this coat is amazing. <laughs> Do you know, every time I wear my new Wookiee coat, whenever someone sees it, they're like, are you serious? And then two minutes later, they're like, you know what? I like it. <laughs> so it's time. I th definitely need a koofy for that. <laughs> And you know what's so funny? Between my Kenti print shirt and making koofies, I have never received so much hate on the internet. <laughs> it's crazy. So if anyone sends me hate, I'm going to send you back to my disclaimer. But for some reason, people go crazy when I uh, make koofies or make anything with a um, hardcore Kenti print. I am not here to offend you. I just like the color. The color of that of that fur coat is quite good. I love the look. The second I put the collar on, it became something completely different. Because with each stage, I would put it on. And, and I liked it. But the, when I put the collar on, I started doing the cocky walk around the room. <laughs> it definitely grew on me. So at this point, I've I'm I'm not saying I'm a koofy making expert, but I've made quite a few koofies. So really what it comes down to is measuring the circumference of your head and then um deciding how tall you want your koofy. Because once you once you know the dimensions of your skull, you literally just cut it in a straight line and then you know, you sew it, you sew it in a circle, then you sew the top. That's literally what a koofy is. The only hard part is making it, well, a decent size for your head because you don't want it to be too tight and you also do not want it to be falling on your head. 
Because koofies do not have brims, so there's really nothing to hold it up except for your head. Man, it's been a while. I'm going to open that that vault. <laughs> Under all my fabric, there's a drawer, and I have all of my ancient projects hidden under there. And there is quite a few koofies under there. All right. And like I said, I'm not trying to... Um, when I say koofy, I just like the style. And I watched way too many X-Clan videos in high school. Perfect. It really doesn't take that much material, but you have to uh, make sure that you have enough. And I really didn't know if I did or not, but looking at this, I have more than enough because my head is not the size of this table. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief. All right, so... Let me get my measuring tape that I, I, it's so sad. I have so many tapes around this room. I can randomly just look at something and there's a tape somewhere. I know I remember the circumference of my head, but it's always good to measure. And you know, I have a very specific style, so I'm going to put it over my ears. There we go. And like I said, you don't want your hat to be so tight that you have to like rip it off and on. Oof, let me check that again. Yeah, that's a good, well, yeah, that's a good size. Okay, so I always add about three or four inches just to give yourself room to negotiate because you're going to fold it over and if you cut it precisely to the size of your head, it will not fit at all. Where is my ruler? I, I've been so disorganized lately. Have you ever been there, Waterney? Actually, no, you look extremely organized. <laughs> You're muted. In my heart, I'm highly organized, but, you know, sometimes life gets away from you. So the ruler is right in front of my face, but I didn't bring a... I forgot I had this. I've had this furry material. Um, this was either my father's or my grandmother's. Probably my father's because he had delusions of grandeur. <laughs> he, bought a, he bought hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of pleather with this idea of making car seats and all that really happened was that his son went through a really hardcore leather phase. <laughs> I still have everything I made. I still have everything I made. <laughs> I even made a video how to make pleather vests pre-lining. I made that two years ago. I'm going to, behind the scenes, I never lined those vests. They're still in my closet right now. Scandal. Probably three years ago I made that video. So if you make your fur hat too big, then you don't have to make earmuffs. I, um, in a weird way, I put, I wear everything over my ears. I, at a young age, I had a hardcore insecurity because I looked like Will Smith in that one fish movie. Where he's a fish, and the whole time you just look at his ears, you're like, why do they make his ears so big? It's a cartoon. Um, would that be um, racism, Alec? No, it's shark tails. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith has giant ears. Does he? In real life, mm. I have big ears. People have big ears. I was just self-conscious about them at, at a young age. I'm okay well, with my body now. <laughs> but your ears don't stick out. My mom's ears, like, they kind of, like, instead of being, you know, swept back, her ears kind of come forward. She's self-conscious about it. 
you don't have sticky out ears. Do you, do you really, um, what kind of material do you think this is? Dose uh, would like to know. This is like fake chinchilla. <laughs> Knowing my, I, this is so old, I don't even know. This is fake fur, but it doesn't have any of the plastic, any of the glue on it. Mm, the good woven stuff. Yeah, knowing my pops, he 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 was McSpendy. I'm uh Mc <laughs> negotiate. He was McSpendy. The um you can actually get it's a real full alternative real full real fur alternative. And what they do is they take one, like sustainable animals, and two, instead of skinning them for their pelt, the animals are shaved. And then the fur is woven into a fabric backing. So you don't get a bunch of like plastics and stuff and you're not harming the animals and you're not having like plastic fur wrecking the environment later as it disintegrates. So um, that can be an option for those of you who would like real fur, but not the death and environmental damage. But anyway, so um, I was sidetracked. I wonder if they did a similar technique with the fibers weaving into a backing on that. Well, it isn't so so old that your fake chinchilla doesn't look fake chinchilla <laughs> fake well, chihuahua just, he said <laughs> oh man i need my glasses you know why i say that because um i don't know what it is i have no idea what this is i've had this forever <laughs> oh no alibaba's got fighting words <laughs> come for animals <laughs> Alibaba Mind says, you, a, a raccoon cap does solve two problems. Hair club for animals. I love that dose. Okay, so Alibaba, for real, because I live in California, it's illegal for me to touch that thing. Senor, th that thing is protected. Good. <laughs> I I'm called glad. and asked. <laughs> and, and now I guarantee you because I called, and asked, I'm on a list now. They're like, if that thing ever disappears, blame this guy because he <laughs> he called and asked about it. <laughs> and I asked bluntly, like, is it legal to ha ha a raccoon? And they were like, sir, it is not blah blah blah. <laughs> so they still care in LA County. They care a lot. Like the like the Faith No More song goes, they care a lot. <laughs> Oh, now I have that song stuck in my head. We care a lot. Oh, 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 oh. You know, Kirk <laughs> Cobain did destroy a certain era. <laughs> and it was like that whole genre I grew up with. I was watching, um, a, what is it? Eric Valentine? Eric Valentine? He, whatever, he's a producer, but he was in um, T-Ride and he produced their album and he was going through the production for one of their songs and he was kind of talking about the history and stuff because they had a second album that was coming out and um there was strife and label pro there were label problems and things um but people were saying oh what happened to t-ride and he said well essentially <laughs> nirvana happened <laughs> It's true though it's true there's even in um hip-hop i won't say exactly but there was a certain era that kind of ushered in like the 2000s that was kind of like death of the conscious rap era where people were saying things mm. where it was more about like wave your body like puffy gosh i can't i've tried to go my whole day without talking about that guy but he, you know, he was very much like wave your watch kind of thing. And it wasn't like KRS-One was like, you know, take care of yourself and people around you. Mm, yeah. It was, it was different. Like they used to discuss things and then it started to get like. But that's like, sold. But the problem is, is that's what made money. And that will forever be the kicker. 
Like but, no matter what you're into, if even if it's detrimental, if it makes money, somebody will be there to buy it. Especially the people who want to glorify it because they're gonna make money off of it. Is that really what made the money though? Because sometimes I think that they get the wrong idea about what it was that made a movie or who grew a up, book or something successful. As someone who grew up in the suburbs, no one bought more Easy E albums than kids who were from where I'm from. No one. No one bought more Dr. Dre. Um, even I'm going to age myself. I even in the CNC music factory days, no one was buying those albums except for kids from the suburbs, you know, and it was, it was like that whole era was um, powered by people sit, telling their parents, hey, I want this. And their parents being like, OK, not knowing what it is. Yeah, but I mean, when you get but I'm talking about like the um, the record company people who who then put the albums out and it's kind of like i mean people want to listen to music and in a lot of ways stuff that's popular is created to be popular and so i wonder how much of that was actually because that was what was selling and how much of that was because of what they were told well i look at um mma if you go to, like, when um, I was a youngster, I knew people that would go to Vegas all the time because there was boxing matches all the time. Boxing was king in Vegas. If there was a boxing match, man, there would literally, it's the weirdest thing for there to be a traffic jam on the 15 going to Vegas. Out in the, you're in the desert and you're like, why is half of LA going to Vegas? Because anytime Tyson would show up, it was an event. And it's like that every weekend now with the UFC. They own Vegas. They own Vegas, you know. But people pay money because they want to see people pummel each other. You know, even if I'm not into it, I can see why it makes money. It's one of those really strange things. Human, We love watching. Like, do you remember that show I was talking, talking about Baycar? How come I loved watching people, um, <laughs> you know, getting busted? Or like Rashawn asked the other night about high-speed chases in L.A. How come that's part of our culture? <laughs> and I wouldn't change it for anything. I love it when my son gets me. He's like, hey, there's a high-speed chase on TV. <laughs> what time is it? I guarantee you if I put it on the TV. Let's see. I have to look that up. Alexa, on average, how many high-speed chases a day are there in Los Angeles? From X7.com. Los Angeles, KABC. In 2014, Channel 7. there were more than 1,200 car chases in Los Angeles County alone. That's about three chases per day. Woof. <laughs> Woof, three a day. Where do people think they're going to go? Like three a day. That's hardcore. One thousand something. In the, what year did she? That was recently the year she just said. That's hardcore. Wow. But I told you 30% get away. Do they really? That's the according to Google. And oh well, actually, the sheriffs put that online. It's probably higher. <laughs> huh. I'm shocked. So Alibaba, why is, oh, wait, hold on. We're still talking about car chases. Alibaba no, go says, ahead, go ahead. well, no, no, there's some comments. Oh. oh, go ahead. Alibaba says, I liked watching the KTLA video of the chase of the six by six Raptor pickup truck that was stolen. The commentary is so funny. You see, you see, it's a dead. <laughs> um, KTLA, and you know what? Shout out to KTLA because they are the last locally owned um, station that's not some giant conglomerate. Mm. 
they're the last. They and they were actually one of the first, and they're the one of the last independently owned channels. And if you're a tourist and you get off the freeway, you see Channel Five when you get off on Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> or is it no on Hollywood Boulevard? Do you see Channel Five? Coincidentally, that's the same tower that Steve O. Um, climbed in a drug fueled haze. How oh dare! Well, he said at the time he said he was sober, and my son was watching an interview. So you know, being a nosy parent, <laughs> I got. I was like, "What are you watching?" And Sivo admitted he was ripped when he mm. did that. I, don't I know, think he's... that's still too big. I'm not going for small though. You know, um, I'm gonna true confession time. When I wear hats that are too tight, if it's on my eyebrow ridge, it slowly starts hurting. I understand that, but it's about to suffocate you by going over your nose. It's not wiggling off my big head though. You have to keep into consideration that I have an almost eight head. Right, but now you've covered your ears entirely. That's the mission. And and your eyes. That's the... Okay, that's exactly what I'm going for. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I am truly Tarzan, and you are Jane. <laughs> like, hey, Tarzan, we have, we have showers now. Hey, Tarzan, we wear shoes now. We don't use picking shears anymore, Tarzan. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to use my pinking <laughs> shears to cut the excess of this off. <laughs> uh, so, um, Dose, I have a... Um, this is from the same company that did my my cup over here that I had my tea in earlier. Um, and unfortunately, look, it was my favorite and it got chipped. Um, but anyway, um, in here I have a latte made with some naturally flavored chocolate espresso turkish army i love that comment i i'm going for a crazy koofy this evening let's go turkish army all the way turkey is actually really beautiful i was supposed to go there the 9 11 happened it's actually a really luxurious well it used to be before you know modern times but come on tripoli was like one of the most beautiful places on earth mm. so i have a couple questions i have a question for you alibaba um why is that called a stripping foot because it'll um help you pay for college <laughs> Because it's an honorable profession. Oh dear. <laughs> because <laughs> keep them coming, keep them coming. You know I laugh at my own jokes. You know I <laughs> die at my own jokes. I make myself laugh. My all the time my son's like, What are you laughing at? And I'm like, let me explain to you. Let me explain. <laughs> I think I'm funny sometimes. <laughs> Well, I do subscribe to a newsletter that once a week sends me three dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really before, yes. I really don't know why it's called a stripper foot. Many have tried to figure it out, but none have found an answer. Well, we need to find who invented it. It's probably some really stuffy guy with a mustache dressed like a 1910 baseball player. Because they all had that look up until the, the 50s. Do you know, I may, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow a mustache until, and then you're going to look at me. If we're going to be a weekend, and you're going to be like, um, you should end that experiment. <laughs> oh, whoops. I look like a different person with a mustache. Hmm. Completely different person with a mustache. 
I mean, mustaches are popular right now, but I'm not really a big fan. So. I'm not 25. It makes me laugh. Even at my son's high school, um, all the kids are rocking mustaches. <laughs> In my, see, but like they're almost bringing back the 1970s because they remind me of people from the 1970s. Like when you look at pictures, because all these kids have shaggy hair now. Do you know? There's been at least three different times where I'm like, oh, that's my son. And it's just some kid with the exact same hair, complexion, color, and everything. <laughs> there's like, there's at least three kids with the exact same hair as my son at, at his school that I've seen so far. Where I'm like, what is he doing out there? I'm like, okay, sorry. False alarm. That's not my son. Continue. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> he could comb it out like Michael the librarian. You know his hair drives me crazy. I've offered him money to cut his hair. And you know what? He has principles. He said no. And I'm like, but I have crispy money. He can't be. You know what? He should be a politician. Because he cannot be bribed. <laughs> <laughs> the Russian hat. Absolutely. It's the fur. It's the fur that makes it Russian. So my grandparents, I actually, you know what? It's so funny. My mom always calls it a stadium jacket. My grandparents went on after World War II. I've told the story a bunch. My grandfather was in the 101st. After World War II, he never flew again in his life, ever again. But he took my grandmother on cruise ships around the world. And um, they went to Russia on some crazy. They were, I remember that one because they were gone for a long time, but they went to Russia. And they came back with those jackets. I have my grandfather's jacket and matching hats. And they Ooh. bought them in Russia. <laughs> Goodness. So my mom always says it's a stadium um, jacket, but it was purchased in Russia with a fuzzy hat. I don't have the hat, but I have the coat. And it, what's their um, writing called? Cyrillic. Well, it's the Cyrillic alphabet. It's in Cyrillic or whatever. <laughs> But it's a, it's a, it's in the my middle bedroom. It's in my collection. <laughs> and that's what I was. I'm, you know, the kufi. I call it a kufi because that's what I first um, would call it. That's what I knew it as. Watching way too much MTV in the early '90s on that when everybody was Afrocentric, bringing it back. But this that style is universal. <clears throat> You could call it a Cossack hat. I just need to get a good template for my head. You know, I always make it too big. And I lost. I am so mad at myself. Actually, should I make it a little bit bigger than this? Yeah, that's about right. No. <laughs> I'm really mad at myself because I am... With one of my patterns, it, I, it was one of the tunics. It came with an actual kufi, um, with patterns for a kufi, and I lost the top because the top was perfect shape. Just it was a perfect circle, and it's in a journal somewhere, and I forgot where it is. Well, why don't you trace around the band that you just made, and then find an object that's circular and that size to clean up the edges. Or just put like a pencil with a string. Let's do it pirate style. Let's just put this out and cut cut it down. I like your idea though, but let's expedite that a little bit. You I'm could put, put a that here, and then I'll put this around it, and then I'm just going to cut around it. Isn't that too small? Oh, I see. It's just cut holding up it. the hat. I see. I think you should maybe draw it and then clean it up with a pencil and some string. Or some other round object that's like draw it out on paper first. Yo no intende plans. Uh, puedes usar el papel, <laughs> un lápiz, y en, oh. entonces puedes tener. You just say, un, say, un, señor sewing, I have your number. Say, Turkey. señor sewing, I have your number. <laughs> Pienso que esto es más grande que necesitas. <laughs> 
because instead of instead of Mensa, I'm mensal. So we're just gonna cut this and we're gonna call it a day. <laughs> we are gonna have a Spanish stream where we teach everybody that Southern Californians speak more speak more Spanish than like third or fourth generation people who actually are Spanish. The average Southern Californian speaks more Spanish than people who actually are. You think so? I know so for a fact. Most Southern Californians speak a weird um, form of Spanish. You may need to change rooms with a master bedroom and make it a warrior walk-in closet. I thought about that too. But that's the one, like, my room is the one. I go in there and I curl in a ball. <laughs> well, if you're curling in a ball, why do you need all that extra space? Because um, it has my room leads to my backyard and I hang out in my backyard. That's how I know that. But the raccoon um, is scared of me. So it doesn't approach me when I'm smoking at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but you have that nice chair. You could set up the chair by the door to the backyard. I think Joy's on to something. Could oh, Joy, did you ever get your get your spouse in the in the the small room and then set up your sewing area in the front room? Oh, could could try buckets for size at Walmart make and make the people of Walmart video of the week <laughs> highlights real and then get one. I'm going to say this to this day. I've been going to Walmart. I dress crazy. I'm surprised I'm not on people in Walmart. I'm surprised no one's called me the Brown Willie Nelson yet. I'm actually disappointed in my picture taking people. My, my pops used to look at me. He's like, you know, I dress like a hobo, but you look like the Brown Willie Nelson. And I took that as a compliment. <laughs> you could I'm go like, in the kitchen and grab a grab a dinner plate I have shishi square plates because I'm bougie and I've oh. gone to too many restaurants <laughs> and I like to feel like I'm classy so even my son looked at me one day he's like why do we have square plates and I told him the truth I have issues son I have deep seated hardcore issues <clears throat> but I went out um you know, have you ever have you ever been to um fancy restaurant and they have square plates? Um yeah, probably. I grew up in a, in a round plate world. <laughs> so square plates are shishi to me. Did you leave seam allowance? It looks small. <laughs> I've got this feeling <laughs> this town is holding me down. <laughs> uh, got... mm -hmm. So changing the subject, Joy says about a quarter of my sewing stuff is in the living room at the moment. Have not finished putting stuff away. Been working on it since Friday night. You could sell him on how cozy that other room would be. And then, you know, with the right drapes and things, it wouldn't get glare on the television when he's trying to watch something. I don't know. This seems like a good idea to me, Joy. Just saying. We'll help you convince him. <laughs> it's actually kind of, well, well perfect. Let's start sewing. Woohoo! Because sometimes you got to cut loose. <laughs> Do you know because of you is in my um that song is in my playlist and now I almost know all the words too. Because of me? Yeah, because I started singing it to you to um completely and utterly avoid listening to you and then mm -hmm. it started popping up in my playlist before this year is over. Mm -hmm. Um I'm going to do a full Kevin Bacon flip. I just have to check with my insurance to see if they what fractures and breaks they cover. Which, which flip are you talking about? Are in the talking? video, he does a full frontal flip with no hands. Like, which, when? He runs, he runs and does a full flip and, flip, and full body. 
when he's oh. in the train yard yes that's an aerial cartwheel i can teach you how to do that if you want i've got i do i've got this. Right. <laughs> can you do a cartwheel yeah of course i can okay. i can walk on my hands i can do right. i'm i'm weirdly coordinated okay actually. so can you do a one-handed cartwheel well my my lefty is kind of recovering right now oh this is true this is true i still but, don't okay. know what i did to my wrist i still don't know when you do your cartwheel do you go with your left hand down first or your right hand down first i'm hardcore left hand i'm i'm okay. left-handed okay so you're this will work out then because what you want to do is called a far arm cartwheel so you're going to do a one-handed cartwheel but instead of putting your left hand down you're going to skip your left hand and you're going to put your right hand down okay and as you keep as you get the feeling of the lift to get all the way over to your right hand then eventually you'll be able to do it with no hands i really like that idea i i want to do it while i still have the coordination mm-hmm because I think 10 years from now, my flipping days will be completely retired. <laughs> but, you know, practice out on the grass or something so you don't hurt yourself. But I have a weird train yard. I have access to something that's train yardy-ish like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a giant beam. Uh, um, that is a giant steel beam he is running on. Mm. It's unreal. Like he mm. was running in, somebody lives in that building that he was running on. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time a bedroom has been a living room. <laughs> we once had a pool table in the living room for the kids. Fun, fun. My kids trying to turn mine into a gym. <clears throat> Are we anti-gym or pro-gym? Um, I prefer other kinds of exercise. I'm not I'm not really a gym person personally. This is just my own personal. But, you know, other people like working out with equipment and stuff. So it's one of those things. I have access to um, a full basketball court and I go there um, as often as I can and not as much as I should. <laughs> <laughs> I have access. I literally have access to my own gymnasium where I can run circles, and I don't go in there as much as I as much as I can. I'm I'm flipping pancakes only. <laughs> oh, now I'm grabbing pancakes. <laughs> oh, I've got that good recipe. <clears throat> you know why, those I'm I'm doing it now while um I can because five years from now I won't be flipping. <laughs> You know what? My recent sprain has really reminded me that I'm mortal. <laughs> oh, now I'm craving pancakes. Do you know what it is? We start having fun, Joy. We start having fun. I start singing Footloose. True, true. And I took up a good chunk of it trying to try that new, that new stripping foot. Dun, 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 dun. And because I'm juvenile, I cannot hang around stripping foot. <laughs> and then I have something else I got. I was looking around eBay for something else, and I happened to see. I got these scallop rulers, and they're thinner than I thought. I thought they were going to be, but. Oh, you know, wow. That's so, thin. Yeah, they're like, like plastic but um and they have instructions on how to use them and i got i was talking to the seller when they sent me like a a special offer and i said if i buy them all will you do a bundle and whatnot and so i still paid too much but i hadn't seen these anywhere else let alone in all the different sizes um so you trace it out so you can do scallops on things or it tells you um how far a, how to mark for putting different uh size buttons on and i got so i got four different sizes aren't these fun i think those are cell cellulose say could be yeah could be those are cool i have one of those i think it's made from aluminum nice 
I don't have to I, check. I think I might have. I think I might have one made of metal myself. I did see one that had it was um, it was the scallop, but they were slightly off, so it looked almost like a a worm or a caterpillar or something. That one was interesting, and that one was um, yeah, it had like yeah, it was kind of like this. Um, but that was like a different kind. But I hadn't seen any like this before. So I thought they were fun. I'm going to make something. Put some decorative something on. Oh, one more thing. Almost forgot. I have all the show and tell today. I got some deliveries. I bought a hem stitcher. Singer hem stitcher. And... It did not come with the box, but I have plates and things. So I just kind of threw in just a bid just to see. And once again, nobody bid on it. And so I got a Singer hem stitcher for $10. And the price that they're going for nowadays, everything has gone up. So I was pretty pleased to have this for $10, even if it didn't have the box. I it never find price. deals like that. That's awesome. I and hem never find deals like that. Oh. Well, but you find other deals that are really good. So, you know. You find the cool small stuff though. I'm I'm looking for stuff that like furniture that can ruin your life. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this massive singer cabinet. It opens up into a Murphy sewing table. I don't know if you heard really <laughs> quick. I, I um uh, while I'm thinking about it, the store. <laughs> That the Salvation Army that they sold that one singer um, cabinet that you were the only person rooting for, it has closed indefinitely. Oh dear! And I looked in the window, and the cabinet was still there. Uh well, you might be able to reach out to them. You know me and twenty-year-olds. <laughs> I'm a real-life Karen, so I, I just walked away. I was like, ah! I did my Klingon death scream and walked away. This is um yeah, Alibaba, it was a it was a, a pretty good price. Um the one with the discs joy is for the like the decorative stitches, like the zigzag and stuff. This one is for um do you ever see on like a tablecloth or pillowcase or skirt or something where it has like a little section of like small holes? And I don't mean like an eyelet, like a lace thing, but it's like, um, it's, I don't have anything that's hem stitched, but, um, oh, you have a couple of those too. Yeah. Like a, P a Pico edger or hem stitcher. And so this needle pushes a big hole in the fabric. Oh, wow. And then it stitches the hole in place. So it makes like a nice open design and I'm making a skirt for my mom and my mom really likes really likes hem stitching so he was excited when this arrived i showed her i'm like oh you're gonna like this so and it didn't come with the box or the little plate but it did come with the manual so i thought that was helpful But um, you have joy. You have some of the um, the oh man words. Come on now. Oh, the Swiss zigzaggers. I've had my eye on a couple of those. That but... sounds like a basketball team. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? Uh, they're playing the Harlem Globe Globetrotters right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna thread this thing through the, you know the ba the baby lock is like you do not treat me right just oh, because no. your surgery wasn't working now you're using me again oh no I should have surged this I'm just I'm just second choice you, oh man second <laughs> fiddle where I'm from we we used to always say like oh you're second fiddle and I'll never forget <laughs> when my kid was born I was like I am now thir officially third fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
how do you sharpen pinking shears? I don't know. Is that something you have to leave to the professionals? Okay, so there's a whole school of thought about this, but um, you can use a chainsaw sharpener. Mm. Okay. <laughs> And I've I've inquired. People have done it. It's a Herculean. It's it's hard. It's not easy. Or you can just go in each each blade and mm -hmm. sharpen it individually with like a file or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's an intricate um, piece of equipment, so you just have to get in. People do that with chainsaws. I think they're crazy. Oh, that I mean, that's a task for a rainy afternoon when you're really bored. I'm going to tell you, I own several chainsaws. I've never been. <laughs> I have never. And I actually, honestly, I own a chainsaw sharpener. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> that thing has dust on it. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> and you're talking and getting excited. It got me feeling good inside. <laughs> That's awesome. See, you can get a sewing machine and get all excited about attachments and things as well. So <laughs> poor. I, I, I missed that one. <laughs> uh. And then Alibaba said, my flicker has been referred to as treadle porn. <laughs> <laughs> <This is true. laughs> Do you know what's so funny? When I got on the internet, I was like, Man, I don't know if people are into sewing machines like I am. This might be weird. Then I looked and I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. People are into sewing machines as much as I am. <laughs> Ali Baba says he uses the chainsaw sharpener for the pinking shears, I assume. Wow. That's a skill. I don't have patience. I wish I had patience like that. And Joy says, if I see attachments in thrift store, I buy them. Good call. Because when they get to eBay, they get expensive. Which drives me crazy. I bought a professional press for like under 30 bucks or something. Some crazy price because they didn't know what they had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going high hat tonight. Oh, wow. Goodness. Oh, yeah. We're going. No, this is the house of stone. We're going full high hat. Let me you add the other piece. You should put a couple pieces of um, of boning in so that it keeps the height. Well, um, my lovely co-host, a mm. kufi. Kufis are made floppy. And this is real. I looked this up. This is why I got hate mail. I'm not kidding you. If you're kufi, and, and this is in certain cultures, if you're kufi, I is flipped to the left, you're married. And I'm not kidding you. If your kufi is to the right, I'm not kidding you. You're a wedding singer. Don't tell me why that is. But now, if you watch anything in Nigeria, you're going to see every dude's kufi is slightly bent to the left because they're all married. You'll never unsee it now. You will never. We're learning stuff here tonight in but the house. <laughs> it looked fabulous straight up like that. I'm going to add some integrity to it right now. Once you add the top, it gives it some oomph. Okay. This isn't my, you know, I look crazy on the horse, but this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> I promise. I look goofy. I come out crazy. They woke me up an hour ago. They took me out of my cryogenic chamber. Uh, Alibaba says, oh, they have. I thought I misread it at first. They have chainsaw sharpeners that are computer driven and is one button and leave it at first i thought you said you had one and i was wondering just how many chainsaws you were sharpening i own quite a few and chainsaw sharpening is a like punishment to me <laughs> well no, the automatic ones they're a different story those could be fun to watch like when you stand at the window at the car wash it's not fun watching yourself being replaced by a robot Oh, excuse me. But you I'm didn't give me a hard time. Anyway. I'm just giving you a hard time. I had to. People complaining about the immigrant pickers when they have no interest in going in the field whatsoever. And being the pickers. Whatsoever. But, uh, so back to more fun conversations. I've been uh, reading like like a lot of people have been talking about Isaac Isimov. Haven't read a book. Have not read one book. I have Ray Bradbury books in this room, like Halloween Tree. And yes, I know it was a special. In the um, in the eighties on television, I have the book. So I love those old obscure um, sci-fi references. <laughs> uh, 
You know, this is just like the fog machine. For someone who can't breathe, I work with the furriest material. I'm yeah. lo I'm looking for my, I should really be wearing a mask. I was gonna say you should have a mask on. What's wrong with you? But then you can't hear me. Well, you know, how long is it gonna take you to pin that on? <laughs> oh it, it's because I'm covered in well, no, it's because I'm covered in lotion. This stuff, like, it's like a magnet. It comes floating towards me. Okay, go go get yourself a mask. I'm so glad that you were not here when I was making my coat. I was, like, taking breaks. Oh, goodness. This, this whole know, room, I need to, need to be hit with, like, a leaf blower. They have these yeah? full-face respirators that have a hose that go to a little thing that you can like clip on your belt and they have like fresh air that wafts in there so the i may bubbling. actually know a guy who had i may actually know one that has one in this room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe you should try it out i'd love to see how one of those works in person do you want to do a demo nice try thanks Thanks, but this is pirate sewing here. Now. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. You. you have classed this place up so much. I am. I am the real life Tarzan. I am straight from out the bush. <laughs> Let me move my coffee. Joy says that we're hot and we're all hot and bothered about this sewing stuff. You know, this is true. They make some sexy attachments. Oh, I quit talking about sewing like six months ago. Mm. I saw one of the one of the two thread embroidery attachments. I was looking at that on auction and it it went for less than what I've seen others go for by a significant amount, but it was still almost $700. So no two thread embroidery attachment for me because that would have been irresponsible. I tell myself firmly. Okay, see, that's that's where I draw the line because I'm crazy when it comes to sewing stuff. But um, I sobered up that day and I walked in that room and there were jukies for ten thousand dollars. I was like, okay, now I'm <laughs> really, I'm not going to spend ten grand for this. <laughs> I discovered my ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> now. Don't get me wrong. If some lovely person out there would like to send me one, or if Juki would like mm. to sponsor me, if um, I stumble upon one in a thrift store, exactly, I'll fire <laughs> everything in this room. I'll have a video of me walking around every sewing machine. You're fired. That would be like a two hour video, though. <laughs> well, you wouldn't boring. have to fire them all. Just do some rearranging. Oh, if I was, if I get that industrial table because I know it's the exact size. Of my blind stitcher, I'm gonna have to rearrange. That's kind of why I put everything over here. Mm -hmm. All that can be moved. You're and getting ready. That table actually lived at my job. The one that Alf's on right now. That actually lived at my job. But then my boss told me I'm no longer allowed to store tables at the job. Boo. I know. Goofy rhymes with goofy. <laughs> Ashuka shit. <laughs> I cannot pronounce that. I'm not familiar. Oh, must irritate the eyes. Absolutely. But let's be real. Like I'm sitting here, like my eyes are already irritated. I'm I use Visine. Like, let's be real. My eyes are red always, anyways. Peerless model B embroidery attachment. I want the Aerosene attachment for my domestic sewing machine, my domestic treadle sewing machine. I never thought of that. The types of materials that are allergy prone, insects, etc. that would be a bad way to find out you're allergic to a certain a material. I am allergic to um, laundry soap, like all kinds of stuff. That's why I like, I am allergic to like, well, Certain kinds of lotions I'm allergic to. It's crazy. So material is the same way. And in a weird way, I don't want everyone to tell me I told you so because you guys were right. But I think I was allergic to the stinky material. Hmm. Imagine. I really think, or or like, yeah, not allergic, but it irritated my skin. Mm-hmm. Mm Good thing you got rid of it then. 
and scheming joy. <laughs> My koofy got me sick. Oh, how did no. you? How did your koofy get you sick? Did you have it in a, a dusty environment? Did you leave it with um, some mold or something? Latex. Yeah, people are allergic to that. For my um, work gloves, I have some black, black, um, they're the nitrile gloves. I use those because they're more comfortable than the latex ones. Did you like, just teach me how to properly say that word? Um, unless I'm mispronouncing it, it's entirely possible that I'm saying it wrong. I have thousands of those at my job. <laughs> and I ask people, how do you say that word? And every single person is from somewhere else around the world or somewhere in Southern <laughs> California. So they're like, I don't know. I don't know. Nobody <laughs> wants to tackle it. I think it's nitrile, but you know. Here, why don't I look it up right now? Latex, I'm allergic to a ton of stuff. Even laundry soap. That's why um, I always laugh. I always laugh. I'm allergic to Tide, everything except for the cheap stuff. Foca, and there's the other one. I'm not allergic to them. It would be interesting to compare ingredients. I think it's less of something. Because Tide has mad dyes in it. But for some reason, the cheaper stuff, it doesn't, not at all. So apparently you're allowed to say nitrile, nitrile, or nitrile. All of those, according to the dictionary, are acceptable pronunciations. Okay, so no answer. Thank you. <laughs> so you could say nitrile or nitrile. I say nitrile because I pronounce everything with just hard English. That's allowed. Nitrile. Nitrile. That there first one, that first one scared the hell out of oh, me. I was I'm like, sorry. I was like, I, hit, I thought I hit the mute button. <laughs> Well, no, don't apologize. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> I saw a video where someone was trying out some like retro stuff with that's supposed to have modern features. And um, so he got one of those signs with the flappy letters like they used to have at train stations and airports. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, when they start flipping around and it's this it's this big thing with like hundreds of those little flappy things. It it um, gave him quite a jump scare every single time. <laughs> I always wonder about that. I'm I haven't. Um, I really don't mess with them because I'm allergic to the latex powder. So I bring my own gloves. I don't even. I don't blame my job. I don't blame anybody for my. Um, my special needs. The nitrile ones don't usually come with powder, and they're made for people who are allergic to. Um, oh come on, like guys! It. This is what we come here for. Three hours and thirty-two minutes in. Come on, let me get. Hold on, oh. let me set up a little bit. So another piece, so that you have like a um, this is like a band, over. like a like a ham like a turned up ham on it that would look good this is preliminary we're just gonna dance around the room now let me okay. clean up a little bit all right all right we're gonna call it a victory we've been here for three and a half this <laughs> is what happens we've been having a good time we thought we were going on a three-hour tour and we crashed an island and now me and the professor are trying to figure out how to get out of here <laughs> and i'm wearing a high hat i'm not ginger. <laughs> I was thinking about that too because there is I left the natural cut side um at the bottom so I could cuff it. I did that on purpose so I could cuff it. But I like the high hat right now. It fits the goofy motif. 2024 is the year of living yo life. <laughs> 
with goofy clothes. Let me get my puffy coat. Oh. Alibaba says some people don't even make a hat in four hours. Have you ever tried making the one hour dress? Anybody? I've watched videos. I've, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, it's so funny you would bring that up. I was thinking about challenging myself to making something in an hour to see if I can do it. Yeah. I do power through certain, if I had no interruptions, I could probably hammer a hood and a shirt hour out in less than an hour. Mm. That's not even brag. That's just fact. Cause I noticed my speed of doing certain things. Well, Alibaba, you know, maybe you were making it for a friend. Maybe you were experimenting in your fashion choices. I made a kilt with no pleats. I made a kilt with no pleats and no one made fun of me. (laughs) Yeah. See? So many people around the world, men, wear skirts. I don't know why we're so uptight about it here. And throughout history... Actually, um, what's her name? Snappy Dragon has a video out about, about that. I haven't watched it yet, but she talks about the history of men wearing wearing what is essentially a skirt or a dress. The circle skirt. The circle skirt is a lot of material. It's kind of overwhelming on me, but I would maybe make like a half circle, maybe a three quarter if I were feeling squirrely. Anybody else? Joy, have you made the the one hour dress? I do have, oh, they're up in the cupboard. I can't show you now. I'll have to try to remember to show you next time. Um, I have some, some twenties sewing patterns. I was at a party and they had like a donation box. And this one lady had done some research at a museum and she had gotten to like fully examine some um 1920s day dresses and she took pattern and she um made patterns from them so she brought some to give away so and they were still there at the end of the evening so i took one of each and then she shamed me for like wanting one of each of her patterns i didn't understand but anyway she put them in the donation box she was giving them away So I have these wonderful patterns that are like drafted from authentic 1920s garments. Oh my goodness. You know who you look like? You look like you're going to Queens to track down your son. I look like Barney Rubble invited me to go bowling. I have fallen in love with this guy. (laughs) You know, just in case I got to go get the mail or something. Just a little quaint coat and hat to wear. Well, you can wear that when you go up to the mountains for some snow. I'm going to wear this to the grocery store to be on the internet. People, you know how many people would take a picture of me? Do you know how many people would lose it? I would be on Twitter in five minutes. You should carry some business cards with you so that when people accost you, you can tell them that you will make things for a modest fee. Um, moderate fee, maybe I should say. Back Heck, in the you're going to charge them what it costs. Um, and to get followers on your sewing channel. No, but can you make pants in less than an hour? Yes. Well, shorts. I think Joy is saying that Joy can make pants. In less oh. Than... Nice. I haven't made pants yet. I drafted a pattern from the Looter Low book, but I haven't yeah. made them yet. Joe, Joe says, back in the day, Tretch from Naughty by Nature used to wear an open-end type sleeve hat with a drawstring. Do you remember that? I actually have on vinyl. I can't remember the name. Whatever group him... And the other guy were in, they were in a, in another group, but they, they were more of, it was more of like dance music, but he would wear that same hat. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm literally going to go digging through the crates looking for that cover because I have have every album my sister and brother ever bought. (laughs) 
and anything I ever purchased. I've I have um Bobby Brown's whole career on vinyl. <laughs> I'm old. Do you oh, still have yeah, a, right. do you have a record player? Several. All right. And I have techniques. Do you have one um like you should do you have one set up in your sewing room and in your living room? I took them out. I took a lot of the um technical stuff out because my pops was the one who was more the DJ. I sew. So I used all the AV equipment. A lot of the other stuff, like if I can incorporate in my channel, I will, but I also don't want to destroy um like techniques are not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and so I keep them um you know, I, I keep them from when I want to um, revise my career. <laughs> Water Buffalo from the Flintstones. Exactly. I look like I'm about to go bowling with Barney Rubble right now. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to draft patterns, found my school book and notes yesterday. That's Ooh. awesome, Joy. I love that. I love that. Fun. I, you know... Um, even something like this, if you think about it, I just cut the pattern instead of sitting there and obsessing over shapes. I was just like, let's do it. You know, that's how I learned how to make koofies in the first place. Depending on the technique player, they, they, some go for thousands now. I think that's what I'm saying. Like I, I, and I have a certain, my, I know someone who used to be a DJ and every time, like someone that i uh used to know but every time she she always asked me do you still have those techniques do you still have those techniques because she knows how much they're worth you must have added more power in your so you must have added more power in your sewing room <laughs> i have two panels in here this entire i would not my house would shut down if i turned on most of this without a second panel in this room You still there, Waterloo? Yes. Sorry, I can't see. My glasses are that dark. <laughs> Sorry. I'll take them off. They're crazy. I lost oh. my other glasses. And because I'm crazy and I own three cars, I can't find my everyday wearing glasses. My sunglasses. Uh-oh. And I remember, this is the worst part. I put them down somewhere. And I remember being like, oh, they don't live here normally. And walking away. Uh -huh. so I, I did something to them, something dumb. <laughs> this is why I'm organized. Normally I am. I don't know why. It was on Saturday when um I was going back and forth buying stuff. I don't know why I put my glasses down. You were discombobulated from the eclipse. It's also because it like every weekend it rains. And last weekend it was raining. And then it was like literal sunshine. It was the strangest thing. It was torrential downpour. Then it was blue skies. Then the clouds would roll in and it was torrential downpour again. <laughs> yes, if I if I have my iron plugged in and I go to the kitchen to use a microwave, I blow the breaker. Thank oh, you. No. This room, it, that's why I had to add a... Well, this room has always been a hangout. So that second panel was there for a reason because we've always pulled more power out of this room. Mm. always that's why i made this room my sewing room because i know i can get crazy in here and not shut my house down well Hold if on. you would <laughs> stop adding tvs <laughs> okay look if i show you how the tardis works you can't tell people how it flies okay <laughs> i do have a mon i have a high hat and a monitor problem i have a big coat problem i have a tall koofy problem and I have a monitor problem. I do. I do. I feel like you should be doing the Russian kicking. Okay. Normally, I would go right into that. But there's... Uh, I tried voguing because I watched way too much YouTube. And I tried voguing and my knees were like, it is not 1995, buddy. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah. so normally I would be doing the rocket kick and everything, but my knees, man, when I was younger, my knees were like shock absorbers. Now they're like a liability. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even have bad, bad knees yet, 
but I can't do my part court. When I, man, I felt indestructible when I was younger. Mm. And now I know my limits. Mm. I understand. I look like I'm about to sell you a pack of sled dogs. <laughs> I look like, 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 oh, how are we going to do this? Let's go get Trapper Joe. Who's Trapper Joe? And then I walk up. <laughs> All right, kids. That's how we save the day. Oh, I, I, this is what I thought I would look like when I was a little kid. I t- I'm telling you, I had a dream of living in Alaska when I was a child. This is what I thought I would look like when I grew up. This is what I thought I would look like. <laughs> I had a dream of living in Alaska. And then I went there and realized I wouldn't survive a month. <laughs> At least during the winter. I love this combo. I knew this hat. I knew the coup. Let's give it. Let's give it a side shot. I knew this would would work. I'm the red one. I was gonna make um red, but I didn't realize how much material I have. Now that I know I have a boatload of red, I might make a shirt or something Elmo crazy with that. Hmm. Cause that shirt just screams Elmo is red and fuzzy. <laughs> or Clifford the confused giant sewist. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's so funny i bought these glasses on purpose and it was on a sunny day i drove home with these on i was like oh these are great but then i they're so dark i can't see anything <laughs> that sounds dangerous to drive in no but we live in well i you know southern california is an extremely sunny place the sun is always shining mm. this room is not a sunny place well <laughs> Red would have looked as good as the brown hat. I think I have enough material to make a kufi and a shirt. That's way more. It said um, two yards, but it just it looks like more than two for some reason. What about a um, a, a <laughs> jacket with a um, a zip out of the Mimi G pattern in the red fur? You look like Gizmo with the glasses. <laughs> oh, I love Gizmo. I freaking loved Gizmo. Oh, that was, that was the era, man. <laughs> they are not the same. I wear my sunglasses at night, glasses <laughs> for sure. Sorry, Corey Hart. It would not be a my so called live stream without mentioning Corey Hart. He should get residuals for me mentioning him so much. Have you seen how many views he has? And he gets the rights to that. So he's all right. He's nice. all right. Let's look. Nice. Let's see. Corey Hart. I'm trying Let's to think of other Corey Hart songs. 40 million views. Wow. That's probably the only Corey Hart song anyone could ever know. <laughs> you know, I was so shocked you knew the name um, to rate our love. Yeah. Oh, and I looked it up. The other song is also Golden Earring. Nobody knows about Golden Earring ever. I like when people, they only know the rate our love song. So when they hear Golden Earring, they're like, who? Who? I actually like Twilight Zone better than Radar Love. I saw this comment that made me laugh that um, he was like, this, like, there was some random comment and it said, this is the only song I could think of where the song is more famous than the band. Because most songs you'll be like, oh, I love this song by Huh Huh. But we just say Radar Love. <laughs> No, I think there are other songs like that where you're like, I don't know who sings that. Okay, Black Betty. Whoa, Black Betty. Uh-huh. Oh, come on. Do you know who sings that? I um it's that guy who looks like he was a dealer in the 70s. <laughs> oh, and it's in my playlist. No, I don't. Or what ab- or what about um in the summertime when the weather is fine? Mungo Jerry. Okay. But a lot that's, of people don't know that that's Mungo Jerry. They just know the song. 
full disclosure, because I absolutely respect you, um, they played that song today on uh, Critically Drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I respect you, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell fairy tales to you. <laughs> it was fr I'm fresh off of Mungo Jerry, like fresh. <laughs> a couple hours ago, we were they were playing that song. Oh, have a good night, Dose. Have a great night, Dose. Thank you for stopping by. I'll be back at it on Wednesday. Have a great night. Thank you so much for stopping by. Black Betty, Ramba Lamb. The comments on that are lit, too. There's some stuff I can't even say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's a bunch of songs, though. Um... I don't know. See, but it's it's different though because I know these songs, so they're not like um, foreign to me. Have you heard of the chainsaw song? There's a song from the '90s where it was a guy literally. The yep. chorus is rah 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 rah. I yep. I literally do that on a chainsaw. <laughs> if you ever want to see a bunch of of like fifty to fifty five year old men's eyes roll, watch me go rah 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 on a chainsaw. <laughs> And start stomping my foot. They're like, you've done that a thousand times, dude. Are you over it yet? Are you over it? <laughs> or what about the um, the Gen X flute call? <laughs> Do you know because of because of you, and I'm blaming you for this, it is cemented in my YouTube. And whenever I'm doom scrolling, I'm like, why is that still there? I thought I told you to go away, and it comes right back. <laughs> I've, I think it's because I watched it more than once. It's like, oh, he wants to watch it a thousand times now. <laughs> Which isn't too far off from what I actually do. For those who don't know, people made jokes about Gen Xers doing everyday things and then hearing the the beginning of, <laughs> of Sledgehammer come on. <laughs> it's true. There are certain songs. Okay. I'm so glad we brought this up. Um, what song, when you hear in the car, do you turn up? It happened to me today, and it, it kind of made me laugh, but I was like, oh, no, I turned it all the way up. Do you want to know what song it was? What? I, I just dropped off Isaiah. I was mm -hmm. on my way to Walmart, so I'm mm -hmm. feeling I'm feeling my oats because I'm by myself. Okay. And Young MC Bust a Move came on. <laughs> If you want it. And the funny thing is, I pulled up to two, like, obviously not people near my, they looked at me and I rolled my window down like, yeah, this is real music, punk. <laughs> I had it up so loud that the, um, that my stock speakers were shaking the car, but oh, it made goodness. me laugh because, um, it's one of those things like, oh, oh. The second I heard bust it, I turned it up. I'm going to Walmart. <laughs> you know, I'm going to wear this to Walmart and play Young MC and bump it oh, in the parking no. lot. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but it made me laugh because I had a moment. I literally had a moment. I turned it up and it made me laugh. But you don't know until it happens to you, you know, because it's, it's, it's an extremely happy song, you know. Is there a song like that that you just you crank it up when you hear it? Oh, lots of songs. Keep in mind, I listen to the, which it's not. It's called the classic hip hop station. Let me tell you my rules. If you remember it, it's not an oldie. I'm looking at you. You, you're all cool. <laughs> remember, if you remember it, it's not an oldie. Well, as as an older person, I'm I'm. You know, You're not much older than me. As that sounds, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think I can. I can fully support you on that. We have Joe to Loss, face facts. Joe hmm. Loss, 1920s big band, still lives in this house, and that's UK 1920s big band. Still lives in my house. The thing is, there are different kinds of oldies. You know, if I want to listen to 20s music. I don't want to listen to 1950s or 60s oldies. If I want to listen to 1950s or 60s oldies, I'm not I'm not looking to hear 
you know, stuff from 1980 or whatever. Once you forget those songs, they're oldies. <laughs> okay, where's your line though? Um, I was sitting in front of my son's school last week and I put on music from the 1940s. And I almost fell asleep in the car. <laughs> It's I mean, that really low, like then it's like jazz, like not jazz, it's that 1940s music, like big band music. All right, I mean, I like big band music, so but, but could you, me... but see, that's the thing, like, how many, like, back then, every band was big band. How many big band bands can you name? Like, how many, um, what per when you think of a zoot suit. Besides Cab Calloway, who do you think of? And not the Zoot Suit Riots either. <laughs> <laughs> when I don't get to talk about modern or, well, revival. No, this is not. Um, oh, when, what band was that when they were bringing back? I had a bunch of friends that started dressing like when they brought back Big Band. In the, Big in the bad late, voodoo daddy. Thank you. They, they, daddies. All of a sudden, they started wearing suspenders with their pants and their hair slicked back. <laughs> I knew quite a few people like that. I forgot about that. There's a good friend that I have an incriminating picture of him. <laughs> oh, Glenn Miller band. The 1812 Overture and Oldie? No, if you remember it, it's not. Tchaikovsky? I have, do you know what's so funny? I have the strangest thing in this room, but I have a bunch of Tchaikovsky tapes. I'm really into Tchaikovsky. <laughs> but that's because I randomly found a bunch of tapes because my father had class. <laughs> and so I really got into it. It's still alive, even though Tchaikovsky's like what? 19th century? <laughs> <laughs> early 19th century? No, yes, yes. Well, no, not early 19th century. He was late 19th century. That's what I'm saying. Like, not now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where's your, where's your line on that? Like, I was in the car with my son. I put on um, My Faith No More CD. And this is when he was younger. He looked at me and said, this music is for old people. Where's that line? <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, which which line? Like, as in what makes something an oldie? Yeah. I'm all nostalgia, heart, and emotion. But where's that rigid line of, like, this is actually an oldie guy? <laughs> well, 30 years? I mean, the thing is, though, I think that it's that it's different. Like, we can't lump it all in the same... You know, like, kind of like what Kilroy was saying earlier. If I want to listen to oldies, I don't want to hear Nirvana, even though I would freely admit that Nirvana is not necessarily like, quote, modern music. Okay, but where would it fall? Um, where would Nirvana, like, where would that genre fall into? We kind of remember it, you know, but it's not new. Well, I think, but that's kind of what I was what I was trying to say. I think that we need to just recognize that there are different eras of oldies and different genres of oldies. You know, because like if big band music is not the same as, say, classic rock, but they're both oldies, you know? Totally. It's one of those weird things. Like... I have a bunch of like the Jets. What what would the Jets be considered? <laughs> or like today, they're um, on critically drinking. They were playing um, a Banana Rama song. In my head, I'm like Banana. May Banana Rama live forever. <laughs> you know, but is that gonna live forever? No. Oh, I look like I look like I'm gonna go pick up my diamonds from a safe deposit box right now. <laughs> I look like I'm wearing white diamonds. <laughs> uh, do you have a Patek Philippe in there or is it a knockoff? <laughs> oh, hold on me. Oh, I'm a wedding. I'm not married. I'm a wedding singer. <laughs> All right, man. I, you know what? 
it's always the ones where I'm like, I'm only going to go for an hour. Four hours later, I'm wearing a big puffy coat and a koofy. Is that what you told people that you were only going for an hour? No, but I get, you oh. know, you know, sometimes I wasn't feeling it before. And then the espresso kicked in and here we uh, are four hours I... later. <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to call this one another victory here in the house of sewing. <laughs> You're not hallucinating. I'm wearing a big puffy coat and my floppy goofy. I want to thank everybody in all sincerity, even though I can't have any dress like this. <laughs> I want to thank everybody. I want to thank all my Latvian people, everyone who watches this stream after. Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm about done too. I can feel it. I'm starting to feel it. Um, you guys are amazing. We went for four hours tonight. You guys are absolutely awesome. I want to thank everybody who stopped by. Anyone who watches this in the future, you are amazing. Um, I'll see you on Wednesday. So, um, as usual, Fluff, I'll just say thank you. So, like I always say, reinforce your seams, be yourself, and I will definitely, definitely see you on Wednesday.